Good morning, everyone. Hello. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I'm back again this morning as part of the Chemnitz Soft Blank Special. And I'm hosting a dialogue this week where we're all buying a variety of soft blanks in many, many types. Now, some of you might have seen me pretty recently. I did a three hour live stream last night. And so, yeah, what, I guess I stopped about 10 hours ago, but I'm back. And today we are going to dye a theme of stripes. And so I plan to dye at least three different types of blanks. A homemade, well, I guess a homemade double strand worsted weight crochet blank, a homemade single stranded crochet blank, and then a knit picks double stranded stroll sock blank. Now, if you're new to one of these sock blank specials, a sock blank or really a knit blank, crochet blank, is a piece of knit or crochet fabric that is, you know, so it's not just like in the yarn, the yarn has been knit or crocheted into the fabric. So then you can dye it in any kind of random pattern, gradient, um, and it's something that you would be harder to do if you had the yarn in a hank. Um, I suppose you could make a really, really, really long hank, but having it knit up is a nice way to do a gradient. Now a double stranded blank is one that has two strands of yarn knit together. So then once you unravel it to make your other project, you can have two identical skeins of yarn. In this case, in their double stranded blanks, they would be two identical 50 gram skeins of yarn. So, you know, the, the crochet blank that we're doing would be perfect for mittens or, um, I mean, I guess with worsted weight, you could do some socks or something, but anything, it's perfect for something that you want to match set for or if you want to dye a really random pattern and then make a symmetrical gradient for a scarf or something like that. It's just a fun way to do that. Oh, hello, three-year-old Logan. <laughs> Good look at the multitasking, yes. Now, hopefully, hopefully I will not spill water on any devices today. Hopefully my webcam won't go out again, but you know, if we have some troubleshooting, we'll just sort of roll with it and and see what we can do. Oh, I need to, speaking of, I need to get my steamer pot heating up. Not that we have anything that we're ready to put in yet, but I think that that would be handy to do. Um, and I think I was able to change a setting so that way the stream help uh, will be pretty good today. So hopefully, hopefully everything will go pretty smoothly. But if you want to try to dye along at home, you can make your own blank. I mean, you can dye along any type of yarn <laughs> that you want, but you can make your own blank or you can buy one from Knit Picks. And my affiliate link to the Knit Picks sock blanks is in the video description. And so if you click on that link, I get um, credit for the referral and it's great. Um, so hopefully I inspire you to dye some yarn in whatever kind of blank or whatever manner you want. That is my goal, is to show you that it can be easy and fun. Uh, I feel like there's something else that I need to say about now. Um, oh, today in the stream, we are gonna be using food coloring as our dye source. Food coloring is a type of acid dye. So if you prefer to use commercial acid dyes, all the techniques that I'm doing translate really well from food coloring to the commercial acid dyes. Just if you're using non-food safe dyes, make sure you're using dedicated dye pots and equipment for that. So good morning, everyone. Um, oh, good. See, I'm glad that I hit the like afternoon, et cetera, in Europe. I know that some of you guys joined um, briefly last night when it was really, really late. So that's why I'm trying to, in all these live streams this week, start them at different times of day uh, so that everyone has a chance to join in. But the <laughs> 8 p.m. and then 9 a.m. is a little hard. I'm a little bit tired this morning. But anyway, I am going to stand up and go to the counter. And before we get started on stripes, I thought that we would unwrap one of the blanks from last night. And also I need to get this set up so Maybe I can check, there we go, the ingestion settings and see the chat. Um, so if you have a question and I don't see it, 
I can't really read the questions very well while I am standing up, but you can always re-ask it uh, <laughs> while we're going. But I thought that I would start off by opening up this crochet blank that we made last night. This is one that, the only one that I did not wash last night because I thought it would be fun to unwrap and see what the pattern looks like this morning. Um, oh, you've been dying well and you're getting a spinning wheel. Oh, good. Yes, I know it's early. Tonight is early. Right now it's early on the West Coast. Feels pretty early for me as well. So this is a single stranded crochet blank that I dyed last night. Ooh. And I dyed this using food coloring. Um, this was made out of Nitpick's Big O yarn, which is 50% superwash merino, I believe. It's 50% superwash wool in any case, and then 50% nylon. But that is bright. That is really, really cool. Um, so the colors, even though I, and today you'll notice me taking pictures, um, I'm going to be filming recaps from each of these dialogues so that way you can see a better close up of the yarn and stuff. But this actually turned out really, really nice. The, the colors bled into one another as we were hand painting it. I was using needle nose squeeze bottles, but we have really nice color penetration on the back. I sort of like squished the yarn through. So anyway, this is the, the pretty blank that we did last night. And yesterday the theme was random patterns. But you can see that I was touching that with my bare hands and I didn't get any dye on them. And I could trust that because since I had dyed it last night, um, I had already, you know, the heat, the, I'd already heated it and steamed it. So I was very confident that the dye was all present in the blank and would not come and stay in my hands. Um, yeah, the orange swirls were really fun. Um, oh no, you're having buffering issues. Um, I hope that, that that can be resolved. I think so. I, I mean, I can't really tell if that's coming from my end, but I think that this YouTube is telling me that the stream health is good right now. I managed to change a setting, figure out how to change a setting. It was asking me to change last night that I couldn't figure out how to do. So today, oh, I guess before I pull out the blank, I need to mix some of our colors. And what did I do with my notebook? Hmm. So like Rebecca, if you are going to go to the effort of write down a plan, it would be handy if you could then find said plan. Are you serious? I'm kind of running around looking for, I wrote out all of my, oh, wait, somehow someone and I would imagine that it's someone that's under four feet tall. I tossed my notebook on the ground. I don't know if there are any candidates for that, but anyway, I've got my Dyer's notebook here. And so I'm planning to use some of the colors that we mixed last night um, in some of the stripes today, but I'm also gonna mix some new colors and I'm gonna be using the Wilton Colorite Color Performance System I found that those mix pretty well. Um, I have not turned the damp Chromebook back on yet that I spilled some water on last night. I think it's fine because uh, it was like it, it did shut off on its own and it didn't stay shut off when I was trying to because it kept trying to wake itself up when I pressed buttons but I think that that it's fine. So uh, but I liked basically I liked some of the blues that I made last night for for one of the yards that we dyed and so I sort of wanted to use some of those blues and browns as a jumping off point for the first stripes that we are going to do. And I think I need, oh I guess I could mix with the foam brushes. I actually have some, I have no idea what material these rags are. I picked them up at Home Depot. 
Let's see if I can grab some spoons. Nope. <laughs> Again, the problem was we're going to grab spoons out before I put the camera up. But here are some from the dishwasher. Okay. So one of the colors, last night I mixed and then I never used. This is half a cup of Wilton's Brown food coloring, half a cup, half a teaspoon of Wilton's Brown icing color in half a cup of water. Um, I mean, technically, I don't know it's a full half teaspoon. I measured it by sort of mixing, taking a really heaping quarter teaspoon, but I think that that is reasonably accurate. Okay, and so I wonder what volume actually it says what volume the needle nose bottles that I have. Of course, I don't know where the package of them that I got is located. Can I see them in here? No. I mean, those are maybe like one. Those were maybe one ounce. Yeah, if I have two ounces of purple left and I filled up. Did I fill up the bottle just once? Or did I fill it up the second time? I'm trying to remember. Oh, I must have filled it up twice. Okay, yeah, so those bottles must have been about one ounce. And so a half cup is, let's say, maybe, is it four? I should have checked and seen. Oh, I can measure right now. I'm basically trying to calculate how much I should increase some of these proportions. And yes, um, okay, so a half cup is a little over three ounces. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out if I should double or triple some of the proportions of colors that I used last night um, when I did it into these tiny, uh, these little needle nose squeeze bottles, um, which of course they wouldn't say the volume, but I would say probably less, a little less than an ounce in there. Um, yes, those are, that's a good, <laughs> Good eye. I am an ounce of 30 milk, yeah. Um, those are some, um, not just Medela, but um, Amida, also former baby bottles. Um, I had some sitting just like, you know, we haven't used them in well over a year. Uh-oh. Um, okay, this is probably a spam call, but hello? Yep, it was a spam call. With my kids at school, I need to answer local area codes because, uh, because I need to uh, make sure that it's not a teacher calling. Okay, so in this one, let's do, let's start off with doubling some of the proportions I did last night, and then I can always increase it from there if the colors are paler than what I want. So I'm going to do three drop, or six drops of black. In this one. Here I'm going to do two drops of black, or sorry, four drops of black, and two drops of blue. So I'm not sure if it really shows because you're a little further away how viscous these food coloring drops are, but they give really, really cool patterns sort of as they fall and start to mix into the water. Okay, so I'm starting off with, oh, I want a red pen for live notes. Okay, and then I'm going to do two drops of blue and two drops of pink. So these are sort of a doubled version of the food coloring drops that I did for the space dye blank last night. I'm going to try, oh, I got a bunch of pink on my hand already. We'll see how absorbent this rag really is. <laughs> okay, and so those were three of the colors. Oh, I wanted to do two brown and one blue, which was a color I had wanted to do at one point, but then for some reason, okay, so I'm going to do four brown and two blue. 
and with the brown that kind of hit the bottom almost like little lead balls. Uh, one, two. So the the benefit of this colorite system, and you're supposedly able to use them with icings as well. Um, not that I really do a lot of cake decorating or anything, but the plus side of this system is that it's concentrated and it's supposed to be easier to measure and mix colors. And there's a lot of recipes out there online. Okay, and so the last one, and I don't think I'm gonna double this one at first. So this one, I'll just do one X at the, at the beginning. I'm gonna do six drops of blue. Two, three, four, five, six. One pink. And one red. Yeah, but it's telling. It's a bit telling when a kit comes with three different shades of red um, and then yellow, orange, and only one blue um, for when it comes to the way things mix because reds tend to be really concentrated. Do they break? Um, the color, right color performance system? Yes. If you, um, the first blank, and of course I don't have the recap done yet because it's still drying, but the first blank that I did last night broke into a really, really pretty, like the, the reds and blues separated really nicely. And I also did a sort of pastel broken black at one point last night as well. All right, so now I just need to sort of stir these up. And when I wipe off the spoon in between, we should get a little sense of the colors. So I think this is the, the blue and brown mixed together. So it looks like six drops or so and half a cup of water. Ooh, sort of a nice green. This is the blue and just pink. No red, which would still be blue-ish as opposed to purple. I think if you wanted a purple, you would need to add a lot more pink. Okay, so it's a brighter blue here than that one. This is the blue and black. Ooh, and this is almost like a, ooh, that's a teal. That's really pretty. And then here is just our black. Now I think that these things, I'm, this rag I'm using is uh, cotton or something. So I'm not noticing the colors breaking at all, but and then of course we've got our brown. Okay, so this, these are sort of the colors that we are going to work with to start. So we've got a, sort of a green, a teal, a black, brown, and two different blues. Wait, unless that's in one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three. Yeah, six colors. Cool. Um, and now I want to put out some plastic wrap which will make it easier for us to wrap up this blank once we are all done dyeing it. So then we can steam it and then start on the next one. So my plan is to potentially do two of the blanks with these colors that we just mixed. And then I think I wanna mix some brighter colors for the commercial blank. I'm gonna do the commercial blank at the end in case I peter out at all. But the, my plan for that one is to do horizontal stripes sort of along the rows and very similar to one I've shown on the channel already, but I want to sort of try to, to try it again because I didn't get to unravel the last blank. Um, yes, one, mil, one milliliter of most liquids is about, so actually one gram I believe is defined as the weight of one milliliter of water. Um, so, but all right, 
But um, yeah, feel free to ask ask any questions. Okay, come on. <laughs> feel free to ask any questions as as we go along. I'll try to chat. My eyes aren't great, but I'll try to keep an eye on the the chat for questions. And if you're so inclined, um, now the the I tend to try to reach everybody's questions, so you don't need this to be seen. But there is a little dollar sign. And so if you wanted to do a super chat, it could, it's kind of like a tip jar, I guess, for the, the stream. And any contributions help fund the materials that I use in these nine videos. So thank you. I got my first super chat ever last night. I was very excited. All right. Let's, so I'm going to start off with the crochet blank. Whoa, this has water in it. That's how I got water on the Chromebook last night. I was moving a bowl that I forgot had water in it, and I splashed it everywhere. So I pre-soaked all these blanks overnight in some tap water with three tablespoons of white vinegar. And now I'm putting it into a salad spinner. That way I can remove any of the excess water, which will make it easier for us to apply the coloring. Because excess water isn't necessarily a bad thing, but when you're trying to add water, uh, when you, especially when you're hand painting, removing as much of the water as you can before you start will make it a little easier to add the colors. So I, I guess I'm gonna lay you out this way. So this is a double-stranded um, worsted weight blank. I use Knit Picks Wool of the Andes worsted weight yarn. And, excuse me. <coughs> excuse me. So I used Wool of the Andes worsted weight yarn and I think maybe a size N crochet hook. So this is different than another crochet blank video will come out this afternoon, a pre-filmed video. So this one is a little different because the, the one that came out, that's going to come out um, later today used, I think, a smaller hook. So the gauge was a bit tighter. But this is 100 grams of yarn. So then when we unravel it, we'll get two identical 50 grams gains. Um, they look blue. Um, I'm, I'm just wearing my normal purple gloves. Oh, bummer. The color looks right to me. But yeah, it looks purple in the stream that I'm seeing, but it could be differences of monitors. Um, let me bring the chat back up. Oh, thank you, everyone. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, okay. So let's see. My plan with this, and the first crochet blank I did, I really wanted to do stripes. Because when you're doing a knit round, um, it's a little harder to stay across the same row because the rows are smaller. But here, we've got over half an inch for each row. And so I think I've got six colors. How many rows do I have? One, two, three, four, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Awesome. All right, so let's start with, my plan is I sort of want to have each stripe span two rows, but I want to do that by having one row completely covered in a color and then sort of half of the two neighboring rows. So that gives us sort of, I mean, it'll be semi-solid because of the way the twists go, but I, I'm sort of hoping for a solid, more variegated, followed by variegated. I'm hoping for it to be stripes, but sort of like an ombre with variation in between. Um, oh, right. It's okay. It's my close up camera. Yeah, the color on the color on this camera is still looks a little purple to me, but the color is weird and I couldn't figure out how to change the white balance on my forward facing camera. Um, so I, the, the knitting machine that I have, I have three. I have two Singer knitting machines, which I don't like using for flat blanks. And then I have, uh, so I have two Singer knitting machines, and then I have 
the loops and threads knitting machine, and I like doing flat blanks on that. I don't think I've done a double-stranded flat blank on it yet, um, but I hope to soon. So today I am using foam brushes to apply the dye to our blank. And the thing about this that is pretty nice, as you can see, is that it's really easy to sort of really controlled add the colors. And of course, then I, I drip it out. But I believe that we also will get pretty nice color penetration through the blank. And oh no, I dripped. That's okay. That's one of the things with hand painting is that drips happen and they are still beautiful. But again, my goal is to do sort of one, at least one complete row with each color and then some parts of the rows on either side. Because I think that that'll look really cool and I'm excited to see really how it looks as we unravel it. And so this is something that's nice about a flat blank versus one in the round, but actually let's look and oh yeah, we're getting nice color penetration. You can see that there's variation of color because there must have been some pink in this one. So the pink is kind of striking first, but uh, that is really, really nice. Let's do some brown. And so you could do stripes with squeeze bottles, but the colors will, you can see that they're, the colors are starting to spread out a bit, which will be cool because we'll get some mixing of these colors. But if you were to use, say, um, if you were to use a squeeze bottle to apply the color, the colors would spread out even further. Because this, the foam brush, in addition to applying the dye, it sort of also sucks up excess liquid as we go. I have been really, really excited to try to do this crochet striping for a while now. <laughs> kind of as soon as I saw the, the blank, because it just looks, the, the double crochet stitches just really read as a stripe already. So it was sort of just a natural idea. I am using a separate brush for each color right now, but that is something that I think I have enough. These foam brushes are fairly inexpensive. And so if you're getting some breaking, you can always add uh, more color. But I think that some breaking around these stitches is part of what will make this really wonderful. The nice thing about doing it this way also is that as I'm doing this, I can kind of keep track of what color I just used. Uh, and let's do, what color was this one? That's the greenish. Let's do the green next on the brown. What are your plans for all the blanks? Um, are these ones, no, none of these, well, none of these blanks are spoken for. I plan to do at some point a de-stash sale um, because I am starting to accumulate a lot of yarn um, and so I have sent all of the yarn all of my commitments to backers that's all been mailed out um, already so none of the the, in the lost sock flake special all those were going to backers so these ones will probably show up when I do 
a DSTASH sale at some point in the future. But I'm still working on the details of that. <laughs> More information will come, though. Yeah, the, um, I feel like there's another question. And will I do any live unraveling? Um, I do plan to definitely do some live unraveling sessions. And since these ones were all dyed live, I could have like a thing of water nearby. I need to get, I forgot to pick up shower curtain hooks. So that way I can um, sort of get the crimps out of the skeins uh, and then reuse the Nini Nani's over and over. But I don't know if I will be doing that this week. Um, it sort of depends on my fatigue level, <laughs> to be honest, um, if it's going to happen this week or if it'll happen, you know, next week or maybe a little bit on the weekend. But yes, I do want to show how these unravel. And so at the end, so I'm planning to do for each live stream, I'll try to do a recap episode of the dried blank. But then at the very end of the, the whole sock blank special, I might do one like big sort of recap of the, the yarns that I dyed and how, what they looked like when they were unraveled. So it's sort of like a before after of each of the blanks. And I might also do a video of some blanks that some of you guys dyed. So you'll have to show me. Uh, Figure out putting my face back on my top down. Dollar Tree has foam brushes, but they come apart really easily. The foam falls off and they get floppy. Um, yeah, these uh, these ones I think I got at Michaels or something. Yeah, I did a Kickstarter in October, and so some of the Kickstarter backers were able to select um, either a dyed soft blank or there were some other choices for rewards there. So I'm. Yeah, and that financial support really helped me <laughs> help me get all these materials so I could do these videos. So I hope to do something else at some point, maybe Patreon or something, so that way I can uh, continue to get more raw materials for more videos. And, uh-oh. Oh, I didn't choose the new color yet. Okay, let's do this blue. We'll do it down here, so we'll see how different it is from that blue. Uh, very, very subtle difference. This one, the other one, because I think it had the pink. Um, I think this one has pink and red in it. But... Yeah, hand painting is fun. It lends itself better, I think, to a live stream versus a pre-filmed video just because it takes some time. But sometimes in some of the more recent hand painting videos, I've started speeding up. When I'm doing something that's just more of the same, I've started speeding it up a bit. Oh, did my, okay, my steamer pot is still on. But man, these, these lines from the crochet stitches are actually making it really, really easy to keep these stripes, stripes straight and even. Let me check the color to penetration is pretty good. Not perfect. We do see there's some bleeding going on up there with that blue, but it's pretty good. Um, will you let us know when you'll be winding these latest blanks on your PVC Nitty Naughty? Yeah, um, I will I will probably like let people know on Facebook. It might be random I hop on in a live stream, but I do have a playlist for, I do have a playlist for the Sock Blank Special too. And in that I'm trying to put things sort of in order. Because for the pre-filmed episodes, I did the unraveling um, in advance in a live stream. So in the order, I sort of have the pre-filmed episode and then the unraveling from it right after it in the playlist. So I'm going to try to have it organized so you can find, excuse me, all of the videos um, that you might want. Okay, I forget what this color was. Is that another blue or is that the... 
Oh, that's sort of the tealish. Let's do that one. I think this one's the black. Oh, it's not looking very teal anymore. I wonder what made me think of it as teal. I don't know. It's sort of like a navy almost. That's pretty. It actually reminds me a bit of just what McCormick's blue can look like. Yeah, so squeeze bottles can give you an easier or sometimes a harder time with color penetration. Um, as, as you're going, because you're going to add more liquid at any given time, but uh, it also, like, sometimes, especially if you're dealing with a superwash yarn, can kind of stick on the top. So the foam brushes, I mean, you could tap really, really lightly, or you can sort of do more of this, like, dab, dab, dab that I'm doing, which helps the colors sort of go through a bit more. And since this is a non-superwash wool, we will get, whoops, since this is a non-superwash wool, we will, um, like the, the color penetration is a bit better because dyes tend to absorb to the super, um, to untreated wools a bit slower than superwash ones. Do, 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 do. These colors are pretty sort of muted for me. And I forget, I think that this one is the, this was the black. Um, yeah, let's do, let's do you down here. So I'm curious about how gray versus red this black will read. If you're just tuning in, today I am dyeing a bunch of homemade and commercial soft blanks and, uh, well, this, this one's a worsted weight blank, but it's also double stranded. And this is part of the Chemnitz Dye Along Soft Blank Special 2. The first soft blank special was in December, but that one featured only um, homemade, or sorry, only Knit Picks commercial blanks which I love, but I realize that they aren't as, um, since they're a little expensive, it's not as accessible for everyone. And so that's why I wanted to make sure to do some homemade blanks. And I forget uh, who first suggested the idea of doing these, these worsted weight blanks. Now, this is, since this is non-superwash wool, you do want to kind of keep in mind that it is feltable. But, yeah. Oh, that's pretty. Um, is the camera reading true on the colors? So the colors are pretty deep. Um, oh, I can do my little trick that I did last night, which is sort of goofy that I needed to do it this way, but this is like my help you guys zoom in. Uh, maybe that's not working as well tonight because there's glare. Um, the colors are very, very muted. Let me see how it looks on the on the the stream that's coming through. I mean, it's the same monitor, but okay. So the colors that you are seeing look a little less defined than what I have, but the colors are very muted. Um, this is one of the reasons why I plan. Um, this is one of the reasons why I plan to do some recaps so that way everyone can see the, uh, that way everyone can see what we get, uh, and get a better sense of the colors in the end. Um, I wonder if roller top essential oil bottles would work for application. You can buy from Dharma Trading Company. They sell some sponge roller top bottles, uh, which I think would be really cool to use. Um, I've tried the, some of the sponge top bottles with the kids and they really liked that. So 
So today, in addition to the plastic wrap, I had just a sh IKEA shower curtain over my work surface to just, you know, keep my counter clean. And since I'm dying multiple blanks, then it's just going to be a little less setting up than taking down to just make it a bit easier for me. You can also pour, you can use little syringes. There's lots of options that you could use for applying these dyes to the yarn, but I really like the control that I get from the sponge brush. And not to mention, you know, it goes through really, really nicely as well. Okay, where is that? Oh, maybe I want to do the problem with using all these dark, dark colors, I think that's the greenish one. I want to use, although maybe that's the black. Mm, maybe this one's the black. The problem, the black looks a little purple, which is fun. Okay, I think this one's the, I don't know. <laughs> the problem with using these dark colors is that they are so concentrated within the cup that it is a little hard, I think this one is the black. Without me putting any kind of labels on them, it's a little hard to keep track about which color is in which cup. But, you know, makes it fun to just sort of go for it. And again, I'm sort of doing approximately two double crochets for each row and I'm aiming to do one entire row double crochet row in a color and then do part of the two rows on either side so we should get some semi-solids plus some mixes oh yeah I think this is the black you can see the reds start to strike to the to the brush a bit which I personally think looks cool but okay this is the I think that's the greenish. Let's do the bright blue and then the green. Yeah, this is our blue and pink. So a little goes a long way. Um, with the Wilton's icing colors, I like to mix between a quarter and a half of a teaspoon and half a cup of water for hand painting, but also I, that's just kind of like my go-to concentration for a lot of the stuff I do. But, you know, here I've got maybe around six to eight drops of the Color Right Color Performance System, which I I'm not sure how many drops are in a quarter teaspoon, actually. Um, I haven't done that math. If someone wants to check on that for me and drop it in the chat, that would be helpful, actually, because um, now I am <laughs> curious. Um, how am I planning on setting the dye? I am going to steam this in a steamer pot that is off camera. I have just like a pasta pot with a steamer pan that is hot and ready to go. So I'm going to wrap this up in plastic wrap and then steam it for about 20 minutes to set the color. I said I knew where the, okay, I think this one is the greenish. Yeah. And so the fun thing about doing this is that we've got sort of, you know, an asymmetrical colorway, a non-repeating colorway, and to me that just makes it all very fun. I plan to do brights on the commercial blank, but I think that if I have some of these colors left over, they'll make an appearance in there as well. You can see that the last rows are not exactly even, but I think that that's, that's mainly because uh, I just was crocheting until I finished. I really, really like this. Um, and the last color, I think, the nice thing is that I can tell from the volume of the cups which colors I've done um, already done twice and which ones I haven't done twice. 
So that is nice and handy. But using these foam brushes is pretty clean. There's not a lot of additional splatters around. I mean, there's a tiny bit that I need to wipe up. But um, most of the dye is on the yarn. And if I were to pick this up without wrapping it in plastic wrap, it would not be dripping because um, I did not add quite that much to the yarn. OK. This is pretty. I'm going to take one of these sort of wiping up the, the little few drops that we've got, which is not much. And then I do want to take a quick picture. You can hear the steamer going. This blank is really, really pretty. So I feel like the results of this will not be as much of a surprise as we might get in well, actually, there is a reasonable amount of liquid. Ooh, look at the bright blue that showed up. Okay, and so I don't want to squeeze this too much, but I'm running it over to my steamer basket. And I'm going to set a timer for 20 minutes and sort of wipe up my counter. And then I'm going to come sit down with you guys for a little bit before we start our next, our next blank. Whew. And I will come and check out all the questions. And here is my, my soda. Yes, absolutely. Um, there's a question, could you microwave this as well to set the heat? And you definitely could. When I'm going to microwave things, I like to do a total of four minutes on high and I do it in two minute increments on my microwave. And what I look for is for it to get I'm hot to touch so you know it's nice and steamy and then I let it cool down for a while um, you know until when things are wrapped up in sort of the jelly roll like I just did they will retain the heat from the microwave for a while and so sometimes I might add like a second round of microwaving it depends on what I did and if I see like if I was doing sprinkles or something I might add more heat because I want the steam to help things dissolve so um, how do you manage the temp with steaming? Well, steam is a consistent temperature. So, you know, you can't really, that's, that's not something that you can really change a ton. But I sort of try not to have too much of a boil just because I don't want it to start like spitting on me. Uh, but yeah, so that's basically what I do. And it's just a you know, a steamer basket over a couple inches of water. Um, and that works really, really well. Um, I don't know if 20 minutes is really necessary. It just felt like a safe amount of time. Um, probably shorter would be fine. But I know that some fiber types require a little more time for the colors to bind. So um, could you use a Ziploc bag to replace the plastic wrap when it's time to steam? Yeah, if it's some, um, so a lot of Ziploc bags are actually microwave safe and stuff, and so you could definitely use something like that. The reason why I like the plastic wrap is because as I was wrapping it up, I sort of, what, the way I was rolling it, there's always a layer of plastic wrap in between the colors, and so that'll help keep the colors from sort of bleeding into one another. Because if I had just like kind of crinkled up these pretty stripes we did, you know, some of the black might get on the blue, and we could end up with the, our clean stripes might not be as clean. Yes. Um, the pre-soak had tap water with three tablespoons of, you should have three, show better, three tablespoons of white vinegar. Um, and, oh, there's 24 drops per teaspoon. Okay, so then if I'm doing eight or nine drops, then I am at, um, you know, like a, a third, six to eight drops, I'm at between a quarter and a third of a teaspoon. So I guess I'm using sort of semi-equivalent amounts of drops as I am uh, the icing color. Thank you. Thank you for looking that up. Um, oh wait, one quarter teaspoon? One quarter teaspoon is 20 to 25 drops. Oh, then I'm using a lot less. Ha! See, there's a 
corrected when I was reading uh, slowly. Can you use the oven? Yes. Um, I've only used the oven once, and I kept, I, for, I used it when I was dyeing silk hankies. Um, so those were, you know, silk, basically silk cocoons that are spread out into a square, and then you get layers and layers and layers of them. And so I dyed some of that with food coloring in the oven, because I had read that you want to control the temperature. But I, the thing with the oven that I would make sure is that you have plenty of liquid. And the same thing with the microwave. You don't want the yarn to dry out. So the nice thing about the steamer pot is that the yarn isn't really going to dry out because you're, unless, I mean, you run out of water in the pot. But in the microwave, you don't want a microwave so long that the yarn dries out. Um, and so the oven, again, if you're checking your water level, it should be fine. But you don't want to end up with crispy yarn. <laughs> a lot of people use a crock pot. I haven't done that myself, um, but I know that it's something that people like to use. And yeah, they, I'm glad that you guys are all joining me today. Oops, I lost the, the chat. Um, so I just added the first length that we dyed. It was a striped double knit or double knit, double stranded crochet blank that I made. And Ooh, my hair is doing something funny. Um, but I just put that into the steamer and we are about to set up, I think, to do another blank. The drops depend on viscosity, sure. Um, yes, uh, of course, the drop size can vary a lot depending on the viscosity. Um, but, and these, these are pretty viscous, so they would have, the drops might be a little larger. I, have, I mean, I haven't compared the the weight. I think that there's, I don't think it's glycerol, but there's something in it that keeps it thick. Um, mainly because when you're doing, when you're mixing with icing colors, you really don't want to change the texture of the icing. So I think that that's one of the, one of the concerns there. Oh, funny. There's a, a drop of food coloring on my, <laughs> the side of my counter. I will need to clean that later. But, um, I'm going to go, since Indy is upset about something, I'm going to go check on the dog. Um, I'm going to send you guys to a brief commercial break. Um, these help fund the channel, so I appreciate you taking the time to watch them. And then I will come back and start setting up the next blank. Um, so I will be back in just a moment. Now, not everyone sees the commercials. Uh, I think that it's sort of random who gets them. Uh, well, not random. I mean, YouTube has an algorithm for it, so I, I don't control who sees them or the type of ad that you see. Um, so uh, that is something that is not within my control, but I'm going to run and check on the dog. Our neighbor's getting a water delivery. So there's a massive bottled water truck out there. But yeah. Um, oh, in the UK you got an ad? Interesting. Um, I have not tried any Hobby Lobby colors. Uh, most of the food coloring brands I've done so far have been a generic one I found at Christmas Tree Store. Uh, McCormick's I use for, for like liquid drops a lot. I've done a lot of Wilton's. <laughs> um, I really like their icing colors, so I've done a lot of those. And now I'm sort of playing more with their color right system, which I know is expensive. Um, the color right system is $24. Um, it's $24 for, or $25 for the eight colors in the kit. Whereas eight colors um, of the icing colors would maybe be, actually it might be pretty similar. It just feels like a big, you know, the little vial is uh, maybe like between two to three dollars when you get it at the store. And so the, the price might be, per bottle might be comparable. What I'm unsure about is 
how the how long the amount of color stretches with the color right system. Um, so, <laughs> all right, let's start. Let's start with our next blank. Oof. Have you considered dyeing a soft blank with Wilton's food coloring frozen in ice cubes and ice dyed over the blank? Well, stay tuned. I didn't use Wilton colors. I used uh, Kool-Aid and some McCormick's liquid drops, but uh, I didn't freeze it in ice cubes. I put ice cubes on the blank and then I put the dye over the ice cubes. So it's a little different, but I did something very similar. The eight count Wilton's you got. Now, did you get the eight count of icing colors or the color right color performance system? Um, that you can get, you know, if you have a coupon, you can get it for cheaper. Right now it is, uh, and I don't know, it is on sale in, on Amazon. I don't remember if I put a link to that in the video description or not. Um, but it is on sale on Amazon right now at least the U.S. Amazon. Um, the yellow thing on the floor in front of the fridge. <laughs> it's a letter C. Today's letter of the day is C and the color of the day is uh, yellow. <laughs> yeah, we have a lot of magnets. Um, yeah, so the icing colors tend to run a bit cheaper than the newer system. They, this is, the color right system, I don't know how old it is, but the icing colors have been around for decades. And so this system is a bunch newer. Huh, the Hobby Lobby is a sort of a mix. I have uh, some, I don't know the brand, but I have some candy colors, which are oil based, that I plan to use at some point. I have a lot of stuff around that I plan, and it's in the like plan to use at some point sort of space. Oh, I did no one commented on the fact that I'm wearing a striped shirt for the striped stripes and more stripes day. All right, let's do and again, so right now I have a single stranded blank. So this one is just one that I made on my Singer knitting machine and it's a blank that is made in the round versus a flat blank. So it is really long and narrow. But I pre-soaked this again in some plain tap water with three, ta well, with three tablespoons of white vinegar. Let's see, maybe I'll put this through the salad spinner once more. Using the Salad spinner can help remove excess water, which means that when you add the dyes, you don't get it really dripping. And I've been very happy with this OXO salad spinner. It has a crack because I opened the lawn, the, the dishwasher onto it, but that was totally user error versus or not even user error, that was just, you know, if you crush something, it might, <laughs> if you crush something, it might break. Oh yeah, our blank is nice and steamy in the pot. Um, oh, I thought a question came up. Oh yeah, it's an OXO salad spinner. Is my outfit LuLaRoe? My pants are. Um, these are not one of my, my favorite ones, but they're, they're ones that my mom got me. Um, and here, I'll hop down because there's a few questions. But yeah, my shirt is just like a random old navy shirt. Um, oh, you think you can see your dogs eating the letters on the fridge? Uh, <laughs> hey, you know, so I like doing some like pattern mixing and then this one isn't one of my best, but I was like, okay, yeah, I, I was tired. But so I wanted to wear the striped shirt and I was like, I don't want to wear one of my favorite leggings that this would go better with. And since it's navy, I didn't want to put on black leggings. So that's why I sort of went for it. <laughs> um, when I said the color right system is worth the money. Yeah. I mean, I think especially if you can get it with a coupon or something, it's definitely worth, you know, 40% off the price. 
Um, but I've dyed a number of things with it so far. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's nice. All right. So this, oh, I want to put down some plastic wrap. Um, sometimes if I forget to put down plastic wrap, I will then put the plastic wrap over the blank and kind of make a little reverse jelly roll. But this will make it easier for us to wrap up the blank once we are done painting it. And I want to think if I want to add, I'm planning to use, and mainly because I sort of want to compare doing a knit blank, even though it's single stranded, but a knit blank to the crochet blank that we just did. Um, this is also Wool of the Andes Worsted Weight Yarn. So you can see that, you know, this goes across my counter like three times. The commercial stroll blanks uh, are wider, so they'll just kind of, I can fit one across the length of the counter like that. But my plan with this one is I want to do some thick stripes, but I'm going to do the lines at a diagonal. Um, because again, I want some areas that are basically one color and then some regions of transition before the next. So I'm going to do thick, sort of thick diagonal stripes up here. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think my, my fashion sense, I sort of like to refer to it as like a you know, adult toddler. I like, I've gotten really into finding white prints and I really like sort of fit and flare dresses that um, I wear a lot of Hannah Anderson as well. I have two boys, but I like all their dresses that they have for kids and they make some for adults as well. Okay, let's start with one of the colors that we have more of. And again, I'm going to start sometimes when, especially with striping, I like to start in the middle of our blank. Um, so, I mean, I could just do, and maybe I'll have to do this another day. I could just do diagonal stripes at about this thickness all the way down. And there would be very little that would go around sort of one round, but I do want to make them a bit thicker. And you can see that using these brushes and because of the gauge of this, the gauge of the, this yarn is pretty thick. The color is going all the way through pretty nicely. Okay. We can check. Yeah, there's definitely, there'll be some lighter patches and darker patches, but I think that it will be, it'll be pretty fun. And I'm curious. Yeah, I'll put the dark blue sort of next to the brighter blue. This one almost feels like a like a spruce, not quite because it's a little too blue, but it definitely feels like, I wonder if this was the, the brown and blue that I did. So that diagonal is pretty subtle. Let's do uh, some brown. But so you can see like in some of these sections around here, uh, it's okay, these colors are all pretty dark, so it's a little hard for you to see, but um, we should get some like blue, blue and brown mixing. Have you ever dyed superwash wool of the Andes? Yes. Have, wait, have I dip dyed it? I'm not sure. Um, this one was done on my Singer. Can I do a navy and fuchsia colorway? Um, maybe not today, but I can definitely do some of that at some point. I decided, I do so many brights that I decided to go for something a bit more muted today. But, um, yeah, I think that navy 
like I really like some of these deep tones that I got here. So with the speckling, I sort of, I think I, I might want to do some, or the other colors, like some blues with navy and sort of play around with some, some navies. Um, but I do have the, both of those colors in some of the rich dyes that I want to play around with a bit more. Uh, but yeah, I'm trying to think, because I've done a fair amount with Wool of the Andes Superwash these days, but I honestly can't remember, where's the brightest blue? Um, where's the, that one is that teal, this one is the black, this one is, there's the green. Um, I've done some more things with Superwash, but I don't think I've dip dyed it, which is funny because it is me and I love dip dyeing. I think people sometimes ask me about my favorite techniques and I enjoy, I mean, I enjoy a lot of different techniques, but I think that hand, oops, that dip dyeing is definitely my favorite thing to do. Uh, I just love watching the way the colors change and the different variations that I can do with it. Just checking. Yeah, there's some white patches that I might be able to crush. And you can see that there's some bleeding. So these colors aren't going to be clean as we... Oh, that's our 20 minutes. I'm going to put the heat on low. Remove, oof, okay, that's warm. Remove our jelly roll. So we won't know if the colors bled into one another until it cools. But if it cools in time, by the end, by the time I stop the stream, then I will open it, open it up. But it is very, very warm right now. Uh, I think this might be our brighter blue. Sort of want to, because we've got these bends. So I'm going to do this. Uh, oh dear. There. Kind of helping myself uh, by making the angle that I wanted on there so that way I can follow it through the curve a bit. This was the color right blue and pink. So the one issue I have with the Singer Knitting Machine is I'm not necessarily a fan with how long the blanks are. It does make them ideally suited for doing something like stripes because, you know, you can hand paint a really long section. They're also really nice for gradients and stuff as well. It just, uh, it can be a bit um, more cumbersome as you are dealing with things on the counter. This is our black. The nice thing about this color right system, and so on these colors that we're dyeing right now, is that it would be really, really easy to mix some more of them again. Um, and that is just because, you know, the we knew we started with a half a cup of water, and then I have written down the number of drops that I did with each of them. So if you write down sort of what you're doing, then that can make it really, really easy for you to attempt to replicate things. And actually, let's make this a bit sharper. There we go. So if I run out, it is not the end oops, of the world. But when I do the, lap, the third blank that I, I'm definitely going to do today in this stream, um, I plan to use some brighter colors so it shows up a bit nicer for all of you. But I am really enjoying these earthy, earthy tones right now.
Yeah, this one, after those bright blues, this one really does feel teal. I think this was the blue and black. Or no, it could be the blue and brown, I suppose. The brown is a bit more yellow. After I finish this one, I'll come back down to the chat to see. But I'm not really keeping with any color order because I think that's one of the fun things with the blank is that it can be non-repeating. Uh, oh, okay, cool. Figure it's always worth checking in. Uh, let's do some brown. The one downside of the Wilton icing colors, so the brown is the one that came from just the, the gel icing colors, is that if you're not starting with warm water, it can be a little harder to get them into solution just because, you know, it just takes a bit more effort. Um, not that it's necessarily a problem, it's just something to keep in mind. But I'm glad that I'm sort of getting through both layers. You know, I've done a very long time ago with one of these homemade blanks. I hand painted it with uh, some Kool-Aid to do a rainbow a really, really long time ago. And so that was the one of the first things I ever did with these homemade blanks. So that's sort of fun to think back on. So that's the tealer one and this is our bright, bright blue. Let's do the bright blue here at the end. So yeah, and the next one we'll get some more high contrast colors going on. Do do do. But I like, because so this one had some like blue and pink in it. So you can really see the breaking is very subtle. But especially if we look at the wrong side, you'll see some of the variation. So I think even if you were to, with some of these colors, hand paint an entire blank, which I mean, isn't necessarily worth it because, you know, you've gone to all this effort to make the blank. You might want to vary the colors up a bit. But you could get some like little breaking within and that's really fun which one do i still have a lot of okay i think this blue and you can even see here because this one has some reds in it i don't know if you can see on the brush that there are some pinks in there and ooh, hey stephanie thank you thank you for the super chat <laughs> Woohoo! i like seeing that bright green box kind of pop up um, have I dyed Superwash BFL with nylon? No. That's not a yarn base. I think I don't have any uh, BFL uh, yarn to dye. I have some, it's not Superwash, I have some BFL roving that I haven't dyed yet that I hope to at some point. Um, one of the things that you really like about watching me do this live is that it gives you an accurate timetable for doing it yourself. Sped up videos makes you think something um, won't take very long. Yeah, no, I try. I try to show a lot of the the hand the hand painting, um, but yeah, sometimes uh, I don't always speed things up. If things vary as I'm doing it, then I might speed it up a bit. Uh, but I try to show as much of the the whole thing as I can. Um, my tie dye blanks are your favorite. Ah, oh, yeah, some of those last night came out amazing. I was so, so, so happy um, with how they, oh no, oh no, turned out, okay. Yay for no drips going on the counter. Okay, I just sort of wanted to get the angle down before going into this curve. But, yeah, the, 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 some of that tie dyeing last night was so, so fun. Um, I was, you know, and again, I think that last night, one of the, the, the spiral tie dye that I did was with 
a, a superwash nylon blend. And so therefore it was not, um, since it was a superwash yarn, where is the, is the green green? Yeah. Um, since it was a superwash yarn, the, the colors struck really fast. And that's why we saw colors along the outside and very little color towards the center. If I had, and I think it would be hard to do this with a tie-dye situation, but if I had somehow added the, the dye first and then added the vinegar, I might have been able to get dye to penetrate deeper into the, <coughs> into the blank. But I think that I will use that blank for some of the stamping and stenciling because there's a lot of negative space left to play around with. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm going to take a brief water break. Uh. Mm. Or a caffeine break, I guess. Maybe I will drink some water as well while I'm standing here. Yeah, so as far as techniques go, dip dyeing is one of the fastest. Low immersion dyeing can be pretty fast as well um, because, you know, it's a little less involved. Some of the hand painting takes, you know, it takes more time. It takes a bit more effort, but I think it is still, excuse me, worth it. I really like this blue with pink. I'm going to try, I think, for the next one to make a non-violet purple. But we'll have to see what the recipe guide recommends. I don't really want to do a color. So some of the colors recommend, you know, like 30 drops of one color. Um, and that's just hard. Like to get a lime green with the color right system, I think you need like, you know, 15 drops of yellow for every drop of blue or something like that. The, whoops, the yellow is a lot less potent than the, than the blues, because if you make the yellow too potent, then it'll be orange. And so that is not ideal. Oh, I keep tripping on the, the top of the uh the the salad spinner um have you tried to get acids with speckle dyes um no not yet oh an electric fry pan is good for a low immersion that would be awesome um i i plan to do that at some point um probably not in a live stream since it's a little harder for me to talk when i'm wearing a mask but i absolutely oh that has some color on the bottom of it I absolutely, absolutely want to do some speckling with acid dyes. Um, I think that on Friday, I'm not going to be, I'm not sure if I'm going to be doing any of the acid dyes in any of the live streams this week. What's tomorrow? Me? No, I think even tomorrow I might do food coloring because I want to mix the guar gum in my blender. But once I have like a stock of that, then maybe I'm in the pre-filmed. I will do jacquard acid dyes in a live stream at some point. Um, this week is a bit more intense, and so I've been wanting to leave things on the counter more um, versus put things away every day. And with the acid dyes, I like to put them away uh, since they're stored in glass bottles, and it would be rather unfortunate if they were uh, to, if someone were to knock those off. As it is, I've been nervous that they were going to pull off this, um, tablecloth and then pull everything to the ground. So the issues of having small children and doing a million live streams in one week. I've been doing a lot more live streams in general lately because uh, you guys like them and sometimes I just get so excited that I want to pop on and share something with you. So that's the, the tealish, that's the green. I think this is the black. Let's do the black at the end and maybe we'll see what, maybe we'll do the brown again. Um, but I did place a nitpicks order last night 
So knit picks, they're, they're removing some of their yarn lines, which means that uh, I guess they're going to come out with some new yarn lines. So that's the, the positive, but things like the chroma fingering twist is going to be going away. And so some other, um, some other yarn lines as well. I think the, the super tough pop, which is like a super jumbo yarn is also going to be going away. But the, the thing about this that's a positive is that they're on sale right now. So if you, I don't have a link to the sale in here. I do on my Facebook page, but if you go through, um, the, the link in the description to the, to the sock blanks, you can, and then click on the sale at the top and clearance, you can get to all the clearance yarns and I'll still get credit for the sale, even if, um, you don't buy what I linked to. Um, but I bought some of the chroma twists since it was 30% off and it would be a fun yarn to dye. And I also got some of the white super tough puff because I thought it would be fun to dye a super jumbo yarn. Right, here's the green. So now that I've got most of this done, I'm sort of going back um, in some places to add, I guess, a little more dye some of the spots, but I'm actually pretty satisfied with this. Let me grab, uh, yeah, you can't wait for your chroma fingering twist. Have you ever really get a mob with the color, color right system? Um, I have, so I've used it in sort of little bits so far. I have not played around with it a ton yet. Um, there is more that I want, want to do with it. So I have not, really tried for a mob. I think, so on their website, they have some colors, but there's another website I found at some point, and I'll have to look. I have notes on it in a different notebook somewhere. Um, but I, they definitely have a lot of color recommendations. So before we start our next blank, I'll pull out the colors and we'll look and think about what colors I want to do, knowing that I'm sort of liking adding between, um, I'm liking sort of the proportion of using six to eight drops of the color right system and half a cup of water for these nice deep colors. And I'm just going to loosely start rolling this up and you can see that there's some paler patches on the back. Um, I personally don't mind that, but so that is all always, you know, a personal preference kind of thing but I'm now going to quickly transfer this into the steamer basket and set a timer for 20 minutes. Whew. This is going pretty good. I think I am, I'm tempted to sort of mix all those colors together um, since there's not a ton of each of them. Um, I think I might just combine them to see what kind of color we get, but I will grab the, where is the color right insert? And so start thinking about the colors that I want to mix. Here it is. So I already have mixed, in addition to the remnants of these deep colors, I have some Wilton's teal that was a quarter teaspoon of teal in half a cup of water. I have creamy peach, um, which was a half teaspoon and a half cup of water and violet which is also a half teaspoon and a half cup of water. So those are some colors that I have. Oops, already. Um, the stripes diagonal, yeah, I think that, you know, I could do it more diagonal and then you would get, you wouldn't get any sections that were more solid um, or more tonal, but I think that I sort of wanted to do a mix here. If I'm still going strong after I do these thin horizontal stripes on the commercial blank, um, excuse me, then I might, maybe we'll set another one and we'll do another one, but we'll see how, how I'm doing. Um, have I ever thought about dyeing a finished knit item on the channel? Yes, I would love to do that. I would love to at some point make a hat, I think, or fingerless mitts or something out of bare yarn and then dye them, um, and show that off. I've absolutely thought about that. How does the green box work? Ah, the green box that showed up, that was something called a super cap. 
So if you look at just below where your chat box is, there's a little dollar symbol. And so if you do a super chat, there's two things that happen. One, it keeps your comment to the top of the chat for a certain period of time, depending on how much money you put in. The other thing that happens is that I get most of the money from the super chat. So it can, it's kind of like a tip jar, I guess. Um, so when I think when a chat is going really, really fast with like thousands of people in it, then it can help like your comments show up longer. But I tend to be able to see every comment or most all the comments. But so it just sort of financially is a contribution. Have I ever tried candy apple red? Or do you mix it with any shade? Is that um, one of the Wilton Eisen colors? I'm slowly, so I started, I started off with just a couple of the Wilton Eisen colors and I've been slowly adding more as I have found them in my shop. Um, uh, oh, I'm so glad that you made it. I, lo I love all these questions. It's, it's awesome to be able to, to chat and think and think about the, the color combination. Like, I'm actually writing down the, navy. yeah, I, I love navy. Um, navy is one, I don't think I've mixed it yet. I have acid dye. I, I think I bought navy. Because navy is also just one that's a little harder to do with food coloring. So, um, yeah, but I've, I've mixed around a lot. The thing with reds, so any food coloring color or that is a true red is a little harder to mix because to get a true red versus a pink, you need a lot of food coloring. And so that's why they tend to have so many, like in the color right system, they have pink, which is red number three. They have crimson, which is red number 40. And then they have true red, which is a mixture of the two. But you just need for a red, you need so much color um, that that's why like you have a separate orange and a separate pink. Because even one drop of red won't give you like a nice pastel pink. You need the like pink to be able to do that. And so that is fun. And let me check. Oh good, I guess my stream health is a bit happier today, which makes me really, really excited. Um, <laughs> because um, it was sort of yelling at me yesterday. <laughs> but right now I'm just taking a, a brief break um, cause I've been standing up for a while. Um, the red last night. Yeah, that was pretty red. I forget what I did for that last night. Um, I honestly don't remember. And I don't know if I wrote that one down, if I just did three drops of red or four drops of red. I think I forgot to write that one down. Um, that, yeah, that was the color right red that I have. Any tips on starting to sell your hand dyed yarn? Well, not really, because I haven't done a lot of selling of my hand dyed yarn. I've done a Kickstarter, I did a Kickstarter campaign in, that started, went from last September to October that did really well. And so I sold basically out of my whole hand dyed collection of yarn. And now I'm building it up again. And so I'm planning to set up an Etsy shop and at some point do a D stash sale. I don't think that I'm going to have a shop that's going to continuously have stock in it because I want my focus to be more on making videos versus selling yarn. But I plan to, as I accumulate a lot of yarn, then, you know, I'll do, you know, random or planned D stash sales. Um, you should do pink and teal together. Ooh. Um, yeah, no, I think I'm going to go for like on this next one, like a lot of different colors and the stripes. Um, and I want to go for like, all oh, right, I'm supposed to be thinking. Yeah, so the problem, the problem with some of these combinations are that, say, for like the pink, it has you using 30 drops of pink. And these are our recipes to use in, I think, two cups of, for two cups of icing. But, you know, 30 drops of pink would be a little too much. I dip dyed a blank in 60 drops of the red at one point, thinking I could get a little bit of a gradient. It was a lot of color, a lot, a lot, a lot of color. Um, <laughs> you rewatched both last night. <laughs> oh, yeah, but okay. I think that I'm gonna take a little break and breathe for a minute and 
think a bit about the colors that I want. And the nice thing is that we can sort of mix colors as we go to like add more to the striping. And I'm going to send you guys to a brief commercial break and these help fund. Um, I appreciate you guys watching them. They, they help fund the channel. Uh, don't worry if you don't see one, not everyone gets them, but I will be right back. I'm gonna hide. I mean, you can kind of see me in the corner, but I'm just kind of hiding for a minute. Ah. <laughs> Drinking some water. Uh, yeah, last night when I got up this morning, I was a little, I, well, I am, I'm a little tired. <laughs> Which makes me giggly, so I don't think that it's a bad issue. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. But sitting down, sitting down feels nice. <laughs> uh, make a stock solution of your pinks and you can have some hues over time. Yeah, I don't really bother making stock solutions of my food coloring colors because they are pretty easy to mix, but with the Jacquard acid dyes, I did make stock solutions. I made a bunch of 1% stock solutions and I do have pink there, but what I'm really learning there. So with food colorings, I have a pretty good sense of what colors are more concentrated than other ones. But with the acid dye colors I picked out, I don't have that gut feeling yet. So some of the primaries I picked, like the blue I picked isn't as intense as I would like. So I might pick another blue next time. Um, oh, you're not sure Super Chat works through the YouTube app? No worry. Um, I, yeah, I, you, last night was the first time I ever received a Super Chat. So it's all new. It's all new to me. Um, I'm hoping YouTube rolls out sponsorship um, because I'm considering setting up a Patreon account. But if YouTube offers sponsorship for non-gamers, they have it for gamers right now. But if they offer it for non-gamers, then I probably wouldn't bother with Patreon. Um, Lucas is doing better. Today is the first day it's, that he has a school since he, he broke his collarbone um, last week. Last week was February vacation, so he was home anyway. But yeah, I mean, he hasn't complained about pain in, in a while. Um, he's still wearing a sling, and we don't see an orthopedist for another week and a half almost. But yeah, I mean, I'm glad he's not in any pain, so he's, he's doing very well. Thank you for asking. And he'll be really glad to hear that you asked about him. That'll make him really happy. But all right. Gonna stand back up and we'll mix some colors and we'll go brights. And I think I will probably mix all of these other guys together that we just used. And bye bye my face. And let's mix up some of these colors. And actually, I guess I do want to rinse out these brushes as well. Do, 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 do. But since I'm going to be doing a variety of colors, it should be a little easier for me to keep things straight <laughs> now. I hope at least. Okay. So... Maybe I'll hold on to one of the brushes. But I'm gonna just quickly go and rinse out a bunch of these cups as well. I'm curious what kind of color we will get. Very little brown left. It's looking like this is going pretty, pretty teal. Yeah, sort of like a, I wonder how this will compare to the actual Wilton's teal. Um, bear with me. I have, I think I do technically have more foam brushes somewhere. If not, I think they're probably upstairs. But I like to, I use disposable cups because they're clear, but I tend to reuse them over and over until they crack or something on me. I picked so 
some up at the dollar store yesterday, which feel a lot more brittle than some of the ones I had been using, which unfortunately I didn't know what the brand was. So I just kind of went and picked something up that I could find. And that is just some, oh, <coughs> excuse me. <laughs> excuse me. All right, let's rinse out these brushes, which actually isn't too hard to do. There's some videos I've done where I've actually like used the same brushes in multiple colors, but I find it handy and faster because there's lots less rinsing involved to give each color its own brush. So I think I'm going to do this one a little, start going a little differently than the way I did last time. And that I'm going to bring up the blank. We're going to see the col I guess the four colors that we have mixed already, and then we'll decide what other colors we want to mix up. So where is the salad spinner? Oh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> I just saw the bless you comment. Yeah, I guess spring is coming if I'm starting to sneeze. So right now, this is the Commercial Knit Picks Double Stranded Blank. This one is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. And since it is double stranded, there are two 50 gram skeins of yarn that are knit together. So then when I eventually unravel it, I will get two identical 50 gram skeins of yarn. Now I am really, 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 really excited about this one. Um, because in the last soft link special, I did a striking pattern and the colors are going to be a bit different, but similar to what I want to do right now. But the main, the, the bummer for me about that last one was that I did not get to be the one to unravel it, which I mean, you know, I'm glad that the Kickstarter backer was able to <laughs> unravel it and wanted the intact blank. I mean, that saved me some work, of course, but uh, I really wanted to see how the random stripes that I did sort of translated to the yarn because I tried to go as straight as I could across the rows, but because of the blank being a little curled um, at the ends, they, there would be some variation in there as well. So that put that on my, I need to redo list. So that is why that's what I am getting ready to do right now. And good. I'm glad the stream help looks good. And yeah, so if you're joining me, this is the third blank that we are doing that, we, that I've done so far in today's live stream. This is the first technical sock blank. And in order to get it to fit across my counter, I sort of block it a bit, which means that um, I'm just sort of tugging a bit on the shape. And since it's stockinette, it does curl a little bit under, and you can see that I'm attempting to uncurl it a bit. But the, the ends, um, this would actually be easier right now if I were not wearing the gloves. So the issue is that normally they use plastic wrap just straight on my countertop, then it doesn't slide around very much. But since I've got this on top of the shower curtain, because I decided to use something bigger to just make cleanup be a little easier, uh, that's why things are slipping around a bit more than normal. And whoops, I forgot to make it so I could see the chat again. Oh, da, 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 da. Um, if I see a commercial that says skip ad, do you lose credit for that? Um, it's a little unclear. I think that, you know, if you skip right away, I don't think I do. But I don't want anyone, like, if there's a commercial that's really annoying or something, I don't want to ask you to watch it. But... And I'm probably not allowed to comment 
much on on that <laughs> but uh, I do appreciate okay look at that's pretty pretty good all right let's check out these four colors that we have already and then we can mix up some more okay so this first one oh funny okay the the timer will beep soon from our blankets cooking this is the mixture of all the muted colors that we just did Ooh, so we've got sort of a deep spruce like color that is pretty and yeah i'm getting really nice color penetration there that's really really pretty okay and then someone commented that yes i am using some old clean they're definitely clean bottles from I mean, these were actually the the bottles that we used for uh writer so i'm using these as well and so we've got we've got wilton's teal creamy peach and violet and i mixed these ones last night in our live stream because this is my i think i had about a 10 hour gap between these streams so i'm really curious how this teal which i believe was a quarter of a teaspoon of the icing color in half a cup of water compares to that other color so that's interesting where this one bleeds you see the teal uh, a teal color but it is much 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 darker than this um, there's i mean there's definitely some red in it as well but <laughs> that's fun it's really fun having to i will uh i'm snapping pictures to use in my replay or recap of these streams so that way you can get a better sense of the the colors um because yeah it can be hard it can be hard to see them on the camera okay and so here's our violet which you can see is nice and dark and bright and we should get a little blue halo here and then we're going to get our creamy peach woohoo that feels very neon and very very happy very very happy what i love about the creamy peach is that we get sort of like a pink to orange breaking aha uh -huh, there's our timer so these are the colors that we have mixed so far and i am more than open to suggestions for some other shades that we should mix um but i just removed our second striped blank here it is, like in a little plate. I'm gonna let it cool off. I'll check on our crochet blank. That's still pretty warm. Um, and okay, I'll just turn off the heat since we're a ways away from doing that right now. Um, is there any way to minimize breaking? Uh, yes, there are, there are a few. Here, I'll sit down um, while we think about the colors, the other colors we want. Um, there are some ways to minimize breaking. So one way that's supposed to help with that when you're dealing with stripes is using a thickener like guar gum. Um, I find that using these foam brushes, I get a little less breaking when I'm doing stripes and hand painting because the, there's not a lot of excess water in there. So the dye doesn't go as far. Um, if, yes, if you start off with very, now I don't know what would happen if you say, hand painted with no acid anywhere and then sort of sprayed vinegar on top of it how you would how that would work for the color penetration you do need acid at some point but the reason why colors break is that some like the reds the red food colorings especially need less acid um, and heat to bind to the yarns the reds tend to stick really fast and the blues and some of the yellows spread out further and that's why we see 
um, this color breaking. Ooh, royal blue. Okay, that looks like that sounds like a fine idea. Um, I think that uh, did we have a good? Was one of the last ones that we did pretty good? Um, I'll look at I'll look at my sheet for a good a good blue. Maybe we'll just try straight blue. And that creamy peach is just. I mean, I'm not a big orange fan. Lucas is, but um, the the it's just sort of like eyeballs loving awesome um can you check yes you can absolutely check the mix i could have checked the mixed color on paper towel um i do that sometimes when i am mixing and kind of going for it but this time i just wanted to go for it and see how dark it was on there i mean i could kind of tell from the splash up that it was going to be teal-esque i just didn't know how dark it would look on the yarn golden yellow or copper copper Ooh. um okay let's let me climb up so I wasn't planning on going back to the icing colors because I wanted a little more instant gratification, but I certainly could. Um, I have here like a pan of just some water and I'm adding half a cup of water to some of these cups. But I agree, I agree. I think we do need a nice yellow and see a lot of a lot of color suggestions i sort of want a pink as well and maybe a blue um okay a lot of a lot of copper requests let's do i feel like that this will be this will look, will look nice with the teals where do i have because okay, i washed to there I washed these spoons last night. Let's do a quarter teaspoon of the copper icing color and half a cup of water. So this will give us more of a brown orange versus the pink orange that we have from the creamy peach. Um, so that was, again, uh, and I should write this down so I don't forget. So with a quarter teaspoon, oops, where are my paper towels? Of course, so over here, a quarter teaspoon and half a cup. Okay, so a quarter teaspoon copper. And let's do a blue. Um, okay, you know what, I am gonna go for the royal blue. It's one of my favorite colors versus mixing one. But I think I will also do a quarter teaspoon of the royal blue and half a cup of water. And I think I'm going to use, I think I'll use the liquid pink and yellow. Um, Color it crimson is your favorite? That's not one that I don't have. Yes, the, so let's do, let's start off with three drops of yellow. Actually, let's start off with two. The reason why I'm starting small here is that if you do too much yellow, you can go orange pretty fast. So, and if this is too pale, then we can always add another drop of food coloring. But see, the two drops of yellow actually gives a really, really nice yellow color. Um, a third drop, I don't think would quite to go orange yet, but I'm actually pretty happy with that. So, that much royal blue. Let's do, let's see what two drops of pink does. And if, oops, I need to add half a cup, it's approximate, of water. We'll add one, yeah, let's do three drops of pink.
what's funny so i just did the three drops of pink and there wasn't really any yeah that's definitely oh that's nice that's pink but the the liquid actually reads as very um orange almost oh but that's nice so you could definitely punch that up with some more food coloring, but we definitely are feeling some neon here. Oh, I like that. That's really nice. Okay, and I gotta mix the other two colors. Um, how do I miss? Um, you've missed a bit. Um, this is the third blank that I've dyed today. I dyed two with sort of a muted, brown teal blue palette and now we're going and doing sort of some brighter colors with just some thin horizontal stripes because i want to see um, how they kind of come apart and then if i'm up for it maybe we'll do one with some more diagonal stripes or something but actually just in case no promises that i have enough in me for a fourth blank today but I just in case I will start pre-soaking another blank if I don't pre-soak it then it definitely will not be an option uh, okay so I'll leave that in there and this this pre-soak had two cups sorry two tablespoons of vinegar in it. So this is going to be sort of like a happy, here we go. Okay, I'm going to leave, actually, no, that's about done. Put this in this cup. Maybe I'll mix all the colors together from the end and do something with that. <laughs> okay. Check out this copper. Yeah, so unlike the the creamy peach is much more of a pink orange. The copper uh, is more toned down. Um, because this one, the creamy peach feels sort of like, you know, very 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 neon, and this one is much more muted but still absolutely lovely now this brush looks very pink and that's because i think i probably used it with violet at one point but i can oh i guess the stripe will be a little bigger um i don't know what these brushes are made out of that the foam sort of sticks to them but whoops Kind of went out of my my zone a bit there um but it would be fun to like i mean there's a lot of stuff you could do you could go for like a plaid and kind of go up and down the blank but this look at how pink that violet stripe is and you can see the the blues that sort of almost match this royal blue even though the royal blue does definitely have some pinks in it uh, but the, the purple is trying, you know, definitely breaking on here, which I think is beautiful. Okay. So this is our, this is our color palette. Um, pretty sure true food coloring with nine drops of yellow and one drop of green. So that sounds really pretty. Um, that sounds really, really pretty, but I think I'm going to stick with these colors so far. I really like the pink. Ooh. And when it overlaps. Yeah, this one. So I think that the color right pink is just red number three. There's no um, red number 40 in it. I think I've mentioned that before. So I'm using all food coloring today. But we're getting really nice color penetration on the back. But we're doing a mixture of sort of the Wilton icing colors and the Color Right Color Performance System. 
and I'm just painting horizontal, brightly colored, random, random stripes, which I think that if this were going to turn into some socks would give a really, really fun, happy, happy sock. But I like, you know, even the way that these colors are mixing in together. So the creamy peach is one that I mixed last night in the stream. So that's why there's not quite as much volume of it right now. But these nitpick stroll blanks, and again, the link to this item is in the, the video description so you can get one for yourself, but it is just so nice. Um, I am a huge, huge fan. Um, so something else that can sort of minimize breaking a bit is the, the time from like the time that you add the color to the time that, you know, you heat it. So if I were to wrap this up and heat it now, we would not see this level of breaking that we see on this other purple stripe. Um, you had a fun idea, make a worsted weight blank and make a temperature bag like this and high temps for the day and did it up so you had a temperature afghan. Oh, that's fun. Um, yeah, you would, you would want to, <laughs> that would actually be really, really cute. Um, oh, I'm really liking the way that this teal is leaning into the yellow and the pink because we see much more of a grass green and then some purple in there. That's just really pretty. I think I'm going to do some teal up next to the violet in a minute. Try not to put colors together that I know will end up turning into something yucky, but I think that the teal and orange could actually combine into something kind of cool. And so you could start, definitely start at one end and sort of work your way up the blank. Um, but I sort of like starting in the middle, especially if I'm doing random colors, because that helps me keep it random. Otherwise, I think I would start to get more of a pattern going on with my colors. Oh, hey, I've got a rainbow here. Ha! Unintentional. But I saw this gap and I was like, ooh, yellow would look pretty there. And that's because I love rainbows. Um, I, I love, rainbows are one of my favorite things to hand paint. I mean, I don't really have I guess I got the pink, but yeah, got a little rainbow there. Aww. Wow, that blue has actually spread out a lot. That's really, really cool. Um, look like a box of crayons. Ooh, I like that. And the fun thing about random stripes is something that we could do. I don't know if I will, but you could, as you're kind of going along, you could mix things out a bit more. So I could go and add, say, um, what color do I want here? I'm trying to like go against my desire <laughs> to uh, do more rainbows. Uh, which is silly because, I mean, rainbows are awesome. But I was like, I must rainbow everything. <laughs> oh, dear. I think was it copper and teal we mixed once? in a dip dye -thon. That was a viewer, viewer request and that ended up being stunning. Um, I was very, very surprised and pleased with how that turned out. But you'll notice that when you're doing some of these stripes, a little bit of color goes a really, really long way. Um, I'm getting really nice color penetration through because I'm only going through one layer of yarn. Let me sort of flip this up. 
So there's a tiny bit of whiter areas, but you know, it's going, the colors are going pretty deep in here. Do some more yellow. This yellow, it's funny. I am not a very big yellow fan. Yellow and orange are not my favorite colors, but I have been really, really into yellow lately and dip dyeing yellow and things like that. So in this yellow stripe, you can see it's definitely thinner on one end and thicker on the other. So we might have some sections that you get a true stripe all the way around, but then there's going to be other areas where um, it's a little more variegated, but you definitely have a nice asymmetric colorway here because we're not getting, we're not doing a repeating pattern. So um, this is something that, you know, you can have fun and do your box of crayon colors, which is something that you, like, um, this is something that wouldn't really work as well uh, if you were, if you wanted to make socks, you could certainly do a fun colorway like this with a single stranded blank and make socks out of it. And they would be socks that would be sort of coordinated because they'd have the same colors in it, but be mismatched. And that could be wonderful, beautiful, and awesome. But these two strands, you know, we could do a symmetric scarf. You could have a really, really long repeat of pattern that would be almost hard to notice. Or you could end up with identical socks, which would be very fun. Um, but you know, is also not, certainly not something that is necessary. Um, just interesting and different. What was that? Oh, that was a pink. Okay. I'll do some of the pink next. Going for this dark teal. This is why sometimes, like, when you mix all the colors together in the end, you don't necessarily end up with brown or something. You can get something really, really fun and, and pretty. Pretty, pretty. Um, you don't like cloth and orange, but this looks nice. Yeah, this is really, really fun. But it's funny because this definitely, I was like, oh, what's that orange? But this is my pink. Whew, teal and pink is just a really fun combination. funny color mixing and color combinations are not necessarily my strong suit um, I I tend to have to just kind of go for my personal favorite colors all the time that t tends to be where I end up heading but you know and so this this light blue that's just coming from the violet breaking but there's a lot of a lot of color in there that one so the more dye that you add in this spot also the more it'll spread out so the pink and the yellow both are more dilute in terms of the amount of color that is there and so therefore uh, those aren't spreading as much like the violet and some of the other shades because there are three primary colors only three or, oh, I probably am not allowed to sing a song I don't have rights to. <laughs> um, let's see, Juniper Green is interesting. Yeah, Juniper Green is really pretty. I haven't seen it as, oh, funny. Um, I think that what you're seeing on the stream, it doesn't really give, I, I'll take pictures. Um, it doesn't quite do it justice, I think. Do some of this creamy peach down here. It's funny how much, I mean, Lucas's favorite color is orange, which means that I, I do a lot more with orange, but I think that dyeing blanks, they're just, just fun because so we have stripes here and you could do, you could make a pair of socks or something. You could do socks that you wanted to do an afterthought heel. So you could just have the sock knit as a tube and you can hand paint stripes on it and get something really, really cool um, as well. You don't have to sort of wait um, 
there's no reason why you need to wait for you know the blank to unravel it to make something but i think that something like this would be a really fun pattern to do on single stranded blanks to make some coordinated mismatched socks i would really enjoy that i think myself not that i knit a lot of socks mainly because um i just haven't i've done a couple pick i guess i've done three yeah, I think I've only done three pairs of socks. I have a bunch of patterns in my queue. I just haven't made any of them yet. I'm really, really enjoying this. Let's do some more copper. Copper, maybe more. I'm surprised by how much fun I'm having with yellow, which is also not one of my favorite colors um, in general, but it's been making me, maybe because it's making me think of daffodils that I'm getting really excited by it right now. I think I just want some spring. And let's end with some teal. Now it would also be fun. You could paint repeating stripes with say, you could just paint the rainbow over and over again. And I think that that would be really pretty and fun as well. Um, but there's nothing that, uh, you know, and you could do different thicknesses and vary it. So it still would not be sort of an exact repeat, but there's definitely fun things you could do with that. Okay, turning my steamer basket back on and oh, I want to take some pictures of you so we can show in the, the recap. This is, this is really fun. My like hand painted, hand painted stripes. I really, really like this. Oh. I'm just having so much fun taking pictures of it. It's so pretty. Okay, and there's not even a lot to wipe up on the edges. So I'm going to fold the plastic wrap over and start wrapping this up. We can see as we go that today, oh, careful not to spill any of these cups as we go that we've got really deep color penetration. There will probably still be a lot of variation as we unravel this. So even if we have an exact row that is all one color, it's not going to be a perfect stripe. Uh, just because like, it's hard, um, you know, especially with these stroll yarns, the colors penetrate so quickly that you end up um, just from the fact that some of the stitches are, um, you know, you've got yarn against yarn and that gives a tiny bit of resist. So then you end up with some, some cool variation, but that's something that I need to, whoops, that's not what I wanted. That is not what I wanted. <laughs> that's something that, uh, and real, that's why I'm really excited to unravel this one. Oh, I forgot. Oof. I need to set a timer for 20 minutes. So that way we can oof, know when it is done. All right. Um, let's see. Bunch of questions. Yeah, this will be fun socks. You did a similar dip dye of a blank this weekend with copper and teal. Ooh, yeah, share it in the group. Um, oh, yeah, if you're not part of the Chemnitz Lab group on Facebook, it's open to anyone that enjoys yarn in any capacity. Just please answer the questions when you when you request to join. The answers don't need to be complicated. Even just put dye yarn or knitting. You don't need to, I mean, the questions, I don't see the answers after I've approved you. I, it's just to keep out um, people that, you know, I just ask that everyone has an obvious interest in fiber arts before I add them. Um, and that keeps out 
uh, some also helps keep out thoughts and stuff like that. How long does it generally take to steam in the steamer basket? I tend to do 20 minutes, but I think you could definitely, I mean, you could do longer. It's not necessary. You might be able to do shorter too. Some fibers take a bit longer to absorb colors, so that's why I sort of settled on 20 minutes. But I usually don't see a lot of bleeding of color after that. Excuse me. Let's see. Wahoo! We are having fun today. I'm so excited. So many of you joined me, and I see some of you have joined me again from last night. That is some dedication. Um, so, so far today we have dyed three different lengths, and I think, even though I put in a fourth one to soak, I think three might be all I have in me. Um, I am a little tired from this back-to-back -back streams. Tomorrow's stream, I think, starts at noon, and I don't have as much time as I thought that I would have for tomorrow's stream. Um, normally on Wednesdays, the boys stay late, since Lucas has a broken collarbone, uh, I am not send, he can't go to dance class, so I have to pick him up at the normal time. Um, have I ever painted my blanks horizontal instead of vertical? So yeah, along the length. Um, I've done one blanking sort of a checkered pattern, so I did both horizontal stripes and vertical stripes on it. And then I did in some of the open spaces, I've added some sprinkles. And that was another one I didn't get to unravel, which sort of bummed me out, because I would have loved to have seen how that turned out. Um, and so that, that's one that I think would be really, really, really pretty. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's something that I would like to play around with more. I'd love to try to do a plaid. Um, I'm in Eastern time zone, so I'm in Massachusetts. Yeah. So I'd love, I'd love to start, um, I'm, I'm trying to vary the time since I'm doing a live stream every day this week. I'm trying to vary the start time so that way. There might be one that someone can catch live because um, I know that, you know, in the more, you know, if I start in the evening, then it's middle of the night in Europe. Um, if I if I start in the morning, then you know it's a work day for a lot of people. Um, but you know, when you work from home, I guess all time is work day. <laughs> um, ooh, mohair. Um, yeah, mohair should definitely be dyeable. It is a protein-based fiber. I'm not sure. I I believe I have a mohair blend, maybe. I don't know for sure. I've never dyed it personally. I just started doing some more blends of fibers. So in a recent live stream, I did a silk blend and an alpaca blend. I think I've got some Angora blends and I might have a mohair one upstairs. Um, yeah, mo um, I'm sure, I, yes, it would be dyeable and beautiful. Um, whoops, oh, I paused myself. <laughs> um, not, not for you guys to see, but just on the, on the preview that I can see. Um, I think that, uh, while, right now, since we're at a break point up there, I'm going to take a brief, br the brief break to just drink some water and uh, relax for a moment. And I'm going to send you guys to a brief commercial break. And but thank you for watching it because it helps support the, the channel. Don't worry if you don't see one, not everyone sees one. But um, thank you for putting up with me, playing the ads, because it helps fund the materials for these videos. So uh, some of you will be seeing an ad right now. Some of you won't. But I'm going to kind of sit back and drink a little bit of soda. I still have to finish a Purim costume today before I pick up the kids. <laughs> so, well, maybe tonight's going to be an order in type night. So I won't be home to make dinner, but I'm making, I shared it on Instagram, I'm making a Hamantaschen costume for Lucas. So really, there's just three seams I need to put in. I cut a big circle, folded it made space like a hole for his good arm, holes for the legs, and so he'll be like a big triangular cookie. So we'll see how long he keeps it on, but yeah, and then Ryder will recycle his Pichu costume from Halloween, I think. That's the one that he chose to wear, but he'll probably wear nothing. Uh, and yeah, so, oh, and I've hidden the chat. So I think most people should be back with 
out now. Um, have you knit a double-stranded fingering blank on your loops and threads machine yet? So I can't remember, <laughs> to be honest. I, I'm trying to remember. Let me, let me run up. Oh, I don't have them in a good container right now. I have them all sorted versus a single and double strands. I've done, I'm in the middle of doing a flat blank on it with a Swish. I forget if it's Swish DK or if it's Swish Worsted, but one of the Superwash Merino lines. I'm working on, I started that, but then had to stop. Oh, I don't remember. Um, so I only got a few rows in. I can't remember if I did double, I think I did do double stranded, but I'm not, oh, oh, I think I did. I think I did a double stranded, like, um, one from the Wool to Die For line. I think it was like a cashmere blend that I did a double stranded blank. Um, I was pretty sure I did one, but I couldn't remember exactly. So I'll have to double check if I've done that. But I think that that's like the second thing that I tried on it. I know that you can. It works. Like the hooks are the same size as the hooks on the Singer knitting machine. And I find the loops and threads machine a lot easier to work with. Um, are you taking requests for another blank or do you have colors all picked out? Um, I think that I'm probably not going to do the fourth blank in this stream today. Um, I'm tired after yesterday's stream. So I think that now it's mostly chat and as, as we steam this one. The, tomorrow, the theme of tomorrow is going to be a lot of fun. So tomorrow is going to be a stamping and stenciling day. I have some blanks that I used yesterday that I'm going to use as a backdrop drop as we attempt to do some different stamping and stenciling techniques. I have some ideas of things I want to try. I also am going to use a thickener. I'm going to use some guar gum to try to thicken some of the paints to see if we see, you know, so today when we were painting, we saw all this bleeding. And so if I were to just hand paint a stencil right now, we would see some of that as well, which when you're using a color like violet could be really cool looking because you could see this blue halo around whatever you stenciled potentially. So not, excuse me, not using a thickener could be advantageous. So we'll, we'll play around and we'll see, you know, where we get sharp lines, where we get bleeding and yeah, we'll, we'll play around. I mean, maybe I'll start on a, on the blank blank that I'm pre soaking right now. So that way we can try out a bunch of things. And then we'll try to do some plan stenciling on the other two blanks. Um, yeah, the, the loops and threads machine, I really am really, really happy with. I mean, 100% alpaca blank and 100% baby alpaca blank. And you're worried it's going to take forever to die? Um, I mean, I don't know. Like, I, so I don't know if I would leave it in the steamer basket longer and maybe do 40 minutes. It took a, it's unclear to me if it was that it needed more time or if it needed more acid. So maybe I would pre-soak it with four tablespoons of vinegar. I mean, I don't really measure the, I'm bad at measuring the volume of water. I just sort of go for it. But I did, when I dip dyed the wool alpaca blend, it did take more time. I do have a 100% alpaca blank um, that I will do in maybe on the last day. I haven't decided when I'm going to have some homemade blanks left over because I need a bunch. Um, yeah, so I think timing wise, it's, I'm not sure when I'm going to start unraveling these. I mean, the ones from yesterday are still drying, so I can't unravel them today. And I mean, I need to rest and stuff today. Anyway, um, tomorrow, the you know, so I've got streams sort of every day, uh, this week. So, you know, I was unsure if I would hop on to, to unravel some of the blanks, but I might focus on my uh, non-live time on filming the recaps. So that way there can be a really nice, like, uh, for each video, like this is some of the, like what it looked like while we were dyeing it, and this is what the dry blank looks like. Um, those kind of short recaps. But then at the end, I want to do a big recap of Okay, dye, dry, unravel. But it's, uh, we'll and I'll probably do like a big, I don't know if I would do it this weekend or if I would do it next week. 
Um, maybe next week when the kids are at school one day, I'll do like a let's unravel all of these yarns kind of thing. But I will try to do a bunch of them in live streams. I know I mentioned natural dyes and using kits. Um, you were wondering if you'd be interested in trying woad, matter, and weld from your dye garden this year. Oh, that's a nice offer. Um, PM me at some point. I have, so I got a kit that had, I think that I had some of those, or at least one of those in the natural dye kit. Um, that's something that, you know, my, my as soon, my like wanting to try soon list is, has gotten long. Um, so I think I'm already on Dye Pot Weekly episodes for like April right now that I've been working on. And I still have to go back and film the Dye Pot Weekly number 35. I decided that I'm going to recreate my first um, ever, just my first ever, yeah, I think my first ever hand-painted colorway. I did this kind of mixture rainbow and I want to do that on the same wool acrylic yarn base that I did that first or that first colorway, but also do it on sock yarn um, to sort of compare the, the colors that we get because I thought that would be fun. Yeah, next week will be the unravel a -thon. I mean, what, we've now done uh, nine blanks. <laughs> nine blanks so far. But to be fair, to be fair, two, at least two of the, and maybe three, three, uh, at least, yeah, two to three of the blanks that I dyed yesterday, I plan to over dye in another, in another episode or another live stream this week. So we'll have like a good combination. Do blanks dry faster than Hank's skeins? Yeah, they can. I mean, especially like the, the Knit Picks blanks, which, okay, there's nothing on the, over there right now. So I can just make myself look nice and big and cover up the top of my head. Um, the, the Knit Picks blanks do dry pretty quickly because it's just, you know, one layer of fabric. Whereas when you have the Hank of yarn, it can be a bit thicker, so it can take longer to dry. Um, when I wash these, I do put them through the solid spinner um, before I hang them up to dry because that helps like remove more of the rinse water and therefore things can dry a bit faster. And so that is something that is helpful. <laughs> uh, but I hope to, yeah, I guess I need, oh, I guess tomorrow I don't start until noon Eastern time. So if I can't get it done this afternoon, then I have tomorrow morning to film the dry blanks. I don't think there's any chance that I'm going to get the recap from yesterday's live stream out before tomorrow's live stream, but I should be able to get that out maybe tomorrow evening at some point or at some point during the day on Thursday. So today, another video is coming out. Um, this is why this is a big, big, big week. Every day we've got a live stream and a pre-filmed episode. So I forget, let me check the schedule. Uh, let me check the schedule. Uh, so today, today's Tuesday, so sometime this afternoon, there is another crochet blank dyeing video that will come out. And tomorrow morning at 8.30, there will be a snow dyeing of two blanks that will come out um, in the morning and then tomorrow's live stream at noon. Yeah, so we've got tons and tons of content so you guys can, well, not quite 24-7. I suppose if you go and rewatch all the old unraveling live streams in the first sock link special, you could probably get um, nearly continuous sock link dyeing videos, but I'm hoping to just give a lot of inspiration for when it comes to dyeing your own blanks, um, because I know that they can be expensive and take a lot of work to make. Um, let me see. Um, any ideas of straightening out the yarns if you don't have a knitting eye? I would recommend buying some plastic like shower curtain hooks. And then you might want something kind of heavy to put on one end, but you could kind of hang and stretch the yarn and maybe the weight of the hook would be enough to help it straighten out. But you also could almost just lock it. So as soon as you wet it, it'll kind of relax. And if you could just kind of go like, you know, sort of do a, oops, I mean, this is a paper towel. So if you do like a, you know, like that without stretching it too much, it'll help the, the yarn sort of relax. Um, but using like the, just the shower curtain hook as some weight and you could kind of hang it, um, from something that might help. 
um, you're interested in getting into this. Do you have any tips for someone like me who's a first timer I'm thinking about doing purple, but should I go in a different direction? Um, I love purples. And so are you thinking about as a first time dyer, just dyeing, you know, hanks of yarn, or do you want to dye blanks? Um, things can kind of vary, I guess, based on what, what you want to do, I guess, in terms of my advice. But purples can be, with food coloring, purples can be hard. If you really want to dye a true purple, I would recommend to going for an acid dye, uh, or food coloring are acid dyes, but getting a commercial acid dye. The Jacquard Violet, to get more of a, it's sort of a blue purple, but I like to add a little bit of pink to it to sort of shift it even a little more purple, and that does not break. Um, oh, you're spinning your wool in the Andy Roving for the first time. Woohoo! Um, does putting yarn with hooks like that damage the fibers? Um, if you put too much weight on it, it could, but uh, a lot of people who do hand spun yarn and stuff use weights that they put at the end to sort of help set the twist of hand spun yarn and stuff as well. So it should not um, really damage it. What is WOTA? That's Wool of the Andes Worsted Weight Yarn. WTA is sort of a shorthand for the for the fiber. I would drop uh, a link in right now, except I don't think sometimes the chat lets me add links, sometimes it doesn't, and I think today is a does not let me add a link. Um, you want to dip that? You love the purple breaking. Oh, awesome! Then it's really not hard. Um, so I get Wilton's Violet food coloring. And do you live in the United States? Because sometimes in different countries, they have different food coloring ingredients approved. So the Wilton's Violet that I use has red number three and blue number one. Um, and I have a lot of videos where I dip dye with that on the channel that should help. Right now, the proportions that I like starting with are eight cups of water and one tablespoon of vinegar for when I'm dip dyeing either um, 100 percent wool like the wool of the andes worsted weight yarn people were just talking about or if i'm doing the stroll fingering weight yarn which is 75 percent superwash merino 25 percent nylon and so with both of those i like starting with less vinegar because it makes the the reds will still bind right away but the blues will take longer and so it gives you sort of like pumps up the volume on the kind of gradient that you get if the blues aren't absorbing in the end. Like when I did the wool silk blend and the wool alpaca blends, I dip dyed in Wilton's Violet on the on a recent live stream. That took a while. And so I added more vinegar after the reds had bound, so that way the blues would find, sort of bind all over. Um, yes, you're in Michigan, perfect. So then I recommend, I recommend Knit Picks yarns. That's what I use in most of my videos. Stroll is currently out of stock, but what kind of, it depends, the, the yarn that you, should, that you pick depends on the, I guess the colors that you, or like what you want to make out of it. So if you want to make socks, um, Stroll's out of stock right now, but Felici is a really nice substitute and dyes beautifully. Um, Wool of the Andes is also like kind of one of my staples. I use that for a lot of hats and stuff that I wear personally and is relatively inexpensive. Um, the, if you click on, Oh, I'm in the live area. Let me go to the watch page. So let me see if I have a good link that I can drop. Um, let me see if I can get one just with their yarns. Uh, hmm, let me open up something to see if I can drop that one in. And let me grab, aha, uh -huh. sorry for the beeps. Oh, here we go. I don't know if it's going to let me put this link in the chat, but here's a link to all the different knit picks, their yarns, and where did the chat go? <laughs> Oh, I don't think it let me add it. Shoot. Um, okay, let me turn off the timer and I'm going to turn off the top. I will be uh, back down to respond to some more of these questions in a moment. But I know this beeping is getting a little annoying. And I'm going to turn off the pot. 
that way I do not forget and grab a bowl. Oh, maybe we'll open up some of these if the crochet one has cooled. We'll open that up in just a minute. But here is, ooh. here is our stripey guy that we first did. So I'll pull up the other bowls of colors and they're still kind of warm. So I don't really want to open them yet. Just sort of a bummer. Um, these are the three blanks that we dyed today. Maybe I can unwrap those two. I won't be able to unwrap this one yet, but I'll do that in, in a minute. Um, yeah, so it, sometimes YouTube doesn't like me to add blanks into the chat, but if you go to, um, so if you click through my, my link, um, the link to the stroll fingering breaks, and the link starts with S-H-R-S-L, um, cause it's my affiliate link. Um, that'll take you to nitpicks. And if you go to yarns, the yarns category, there will be like a option on the side for like bear dye your own. And then that will take you to all the bear yarns that they offer. But I've been really, really happy with their yarns. Um, I really, really enjoy using them. Um, I, I have, I think I have some line brand stockies now. I haven't tried it yet myself, but that's one you might be able to find in big box stores. Um, Lion Brand Fisherman's Wool also dyes nicely. That's something that you might be able to find in person. Uh, have I dyed Felici? I have. Um, you found the rinsing to be challenging? Um, well, Stroll also has, Felici and Stroll have the exact same fiber content. The main difference between them, because I call nitpicks to ask, is the, they have, um, the twist is different because they're made at different mills. So I think Felici is made in Italy and um, I think that Stroll might be made at a mill in Peru. Um, I forget exactly the country for Stroll, but I'm assuming based on the name, because they said one is made in Italy, and especially expecting that the Felici is the one made in Italy. Uh, but the, so the yardage is a little different. The Felici is spun a little tighter. Um, and so they, they describe Stroll as being a little loftier. So the, they both have the same number of plies. Um, it's just since it's different mills, they're slightly, slightly different. Um, oh no, I'm sorry that you thought the thing was your house. No, I just didn't want to lose the train of thought. Um, you do a lot of loom knitting blankets, big blankets, like bed size blankets. Okay, so then um, you want, when you're gonna dye yarn, what you want to make sure is that you have some, if you're gonna dye to break wool and violet, you want there to be a high percentage of wool. I have not yet, and it's on my list, done. So I started off dyeing 20% wool, 80% acrylic yarns. And those dye really nicely with food coloring. You just end up with a lot more muted colors versus some of the brights. Oh, you can't even see. I put them on the counter. Here we go. There are the blanks that we dyed today. Um, and now you see me on both sides. Let's <laughs> so here, there are the, or there are the blanks that we did today. So the colors are bright because we had either 100% wool or nylon actually um, also can be dyed with food coloring, but acrylic can't. So if you really want um, to do something that's washable, I recommend a super wash wool. Um, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe it's a lot of dye that had trouble rinsing out. Um, I, I used cool. I've only dyed one of them um, so far, and I used Kool Aid, so I didn't have a ton of dye in there, but it rinsed, you know, totally fine. Um, the yeah, so they they have some bulky ones that would be good for um, for blankets, but yeah, to dye a blanket's worth of yarn, that would be that would be a big dedication. <laughs> I mean, I guess I dyed a blanket's worth of yarn, so I have a. If you look for the Chemnitz 10 hour afghan, I made that out of, I think I used six or eight strands of worsted weight yarn together at a time on size 50 needles. And I used all of the yarns that I first dyed with food coloring and a bunch of other remnant wool acrylic blends in my stash to make that blanket. Um, yeah, the close Michaels to you are an hour away, both north and south. So Nipix, I mean, they, they offer free shipping if you spend $50. Um, I don't recommend 
ordering from, even though I am also a Lion brand affiliate, I don't necessarily recommend ordering from them directly, but you can order some of the, the, the yarns from like michaels.com and stuff as well. Um, so where did I go? I guess when I lived in Michigan, because I, I grew up in Ann Arbor, or I went to high school in Ann Arbor, um, we would go to Joanne Fabrics, sometimes has some of these yarns as well. They carry some wool, wool yarns. Um, also, if you have a local yarn store, they might also be able to help you um, find something. But yeah, I mean, I started, so I started, I found Knit Picks because I was looking for 100% wool yarn. Um, and my, because I wanted to try doing some felted projects, and I was having trouble finding 100% wool yarns in some of the local big box craft stores. And so I found them and I was like, ooh, 50 gram balls of yarn. That's, at the time, I think they were $2 each. Um, I was like, this is a good price. And so then, you know, I made some oven mitts. And then when I started by, you know, I started doing a long time ago, I have an old blog post about looking for bare yarns, um, where to buy bare yarns. And, you know, the I like that you could buy individual skeins versus committing to 10 or 20 pack. And so that was nice, but uh, I've been, you know, so even though I get commissions when like you guys go through my affiliate links, I have been using their yarns almost, not quite exclusively, but almost exclusively on this channel for years. And I was sort of kicking myself that I did not become an affiliate sooner because each time I dye yarn, it's almost like a commercial <laughs> for them. Um, yeah, patent to watch your instant gratification. Oh, you like the Knit Picks yarns more? Hee <laughs> hee. Oh, that's Ann Arbor's three hours away. Um, I still go back to Michigan. My, my family goes to Mackinac Island every summer. So, uh, I mean, I don't always go every summer, but my mom lives there all summer, so. Oh, yeah, my, but my, let me see. Okay, I'm gonna go grab my blanket. Uh, I will be right back. One sec. That was, although I guess you guys missed since I turned off my face, my foot did move. So, I feel like I made this maybe in 2010. Uh, I made this a long time ago. Uh, but, so this is the Chemnitz 10 hour afghan. It's called the 10 hour afghan because it took me under 10 hours to knit the whole thing. Now, I had a timer going, but I did not like count down time. It wasn't all one sitting, so I ran out of yarn. Um, so then I had to dye some more, but it does, I mean, it's pilly. This was made out of mostly Lion Brand Wool Ease yarn, and it's like a comfy, comfy, cozy blanket. So the navy and the really deep colors are not ones that I dyed. Um, so the teal isn't one that I dyed. And there is some bare yarn in here as well, but the more pastel colors here came from uh, some of my first ever colorways. So this sort of section on my hand has, um, and there's some like oranges and stuff. And so those were colors that I got from dyeing this 20% wool, 80% acrylic blend. And this is a blanket that has been like on, like out in my living room for years. And I know it's been washed like a couple of times as well. So, you know, it's something that the food coloring colors do last. And yeah, so that's just the, oof. Comfy, cozy Chemnitz blanket. Uh, but I, I, my stash started going up, so I was like, I need a de-stash project, and I really wanted a fast. I think that there was like a eight-hour or six-hour crochet blanket that I saw, and I was like, I want to do a knitting version. How do I name it? Let's see how long it takes me. <laughs> um, is there a difference between store-bought yarn and hand-dyed yarn, and are they workable together? They are absolutely workable together. So some store-bought yarns are actually hand-dyed. I think the difference between, um, you know, hand-dyed yarns tend to be done in smaller batches. Um, therefore, the colorways are less, um, the colorways can be consistent, but there's more variation in tone. If you want, like, machine-dyed yarns tend to give you a better solid. Hand dyed and kettle dyed gives you sometimes these subtle variation of colors and stuff. 
Um, the other difference could be the types of dyes that are used. Uh, I don't know exactly what types of dyes um, commercial dyers use, but uh, a lot of independent dyers use the use acid like acid dyes like Dharma acid dyes, Jacquard acid dyes are probably the most common from independent dyers. But some of the colorways that you get from independent dyers are things that would be really hard to mass produce. Um, because like getting some of these like speckled and multicolored yarns are something that uh, you know I think that the to mass produce with the equipment that you need and stuff is just you know, you can get things that are a little more unique, one of a kind. I mean, it's not quite necessarily one of a kind because lots of people can do something similar, but you can get things that are just really pretty. And so, um, got to run to work. Thanks for joining me today. So you can definitely use them together. Um, with hand dyed yarns, acid dyed yarns, you typically want to wash them on cold because the way that they're not, the dyes aren't, aren't covalently bound to the protein fibers in the yarn. And so if you, with, even with like commercially dyed, things dyed with acid dyes, you would get some bleeding if you did it on hot. There's a lot of textiles that you want to wash on cold because you don't, you want to maintain the intensity of the color. Um, so it just depends on the, the type of dye that is there. If you wanted to re-dye that blanket, um, how would I do it? Ooh, well, so this blanket, so some of the colors are pastel, and here's a good section that has some more of the uh, saturated. So the deepest, the darkest color was not done, uh, like this dark forest green wasn't done by me, but these other hues were. Um, I don't think I would be able to get these colors much darker if I were to re-dye it, and the blanket is so big that it would be hard for me to, to dye. Um, so I guess if you wanted to over dye a blanket, you would need, I don't know, like a metal trough of some kind to add hot water and dye to, because this is too big for even a canning pot. Um, but this one had, I think like 30 some skeins of yarn in it. So that is, it's hard. I've been asked about dyeing enough yarn for a sweater which is something that made me a little, is something that maybe I can try at some point. It would makes me a little nervous because it would be hard, a little hard to do. But the rolled yarn in plastic looks like sausage. Mmm. Um, I think I'll go up and unwrap one of them before I sign off. Um, here, why don't I come up and open up? <laughs> Speaking of lunchtime, I am starting to get hungry. Uh, hopefully I don't color my hands too much. I need to decide. So some of these colors, I need more bottles to save things in. Some of these I might mix together to save for. Some of these I guess I might save straight for tomorrow. Some I might mix together um, and save. Let's see. Okay, so this is the commercial blank we did. That is still very, very hot. I'm actually going to go put it on the stove, but I think my countertop is fine. Um, so here is the first blank we dyed today. This is our crocheted blank. And I'm not wearing gloves right now. I'm expecting all of the dye to be in the yarn. There might be a little bit of dye on the plastic wrap. That is the, the danger. But the dye should otherwise all be here. There is my, yeah, there's a tiny bit of dye on the plastic wrap. But these stripes actually, so fun. We see some breaking in this blue that we mixed. Um, there's some other breaking in some of these other sections as well, but with the browns, but these actually stayed in place really, really nicely. Um, I'm pulling up, well, for snapping a quick picture, but then I'm going to pull up the picture of what this looked like before we dyed it. Okay, come on. Nope. Yeah, I mean, it's, oh, I put it the reverse way. Huh. Okay, so I turned my phone upside down. Yeah, this actually, 
like the stripes, there's not a lot of bleeding of colors. What we do see post steaming is here, the pinks and the blues that have broken are a little more obvious, I guess, um, than they were before. Ooh, look at how bright that blue is. So this is the, the wrong side, I think. And you can see some of these hues. I love that. So we're gonna, in some sections, you'll see the stripes with the variation of some of the colors, but in some cases like here, this looks very like mixed. And so we'll have, you know, it, it will read somewhat ombre with some variation of color in there. I think that that is really, really cool. And sort of wiping off this plastic wrap. And so this blank right here was a double stranded blank. So when I unravel this, and I think, I'm pretty sure I started with two different 50 gram skeins of yarn, so that it should be not very twisted around each other. Hopefully we didn't have a lot of felting or anything going on, but we'll end up with two identical 50 gram skeins of yarn from that, from that blank. But before, I'm not sure quite when all the unraveling will happen, but place that down, see if there's any, looks like a lot of black, yes, it's a lot, that one was a lot of dark colors. Um, what about washing? I've never tried washing machine dyes before. Um, there are a lot that have instructions for the washing machine, and I think, yeah, I guess if you were going to dye something that large, you would need to use a washing machine but I would still just be a little nervous to try it. All right, let's unwrap. It's still a little warm. And so the, this blank, this is the same yarn base. This is, but this one was not double stranded. Oh, Andy. This was single stranded wool of the Andes worsted weight yarn and made, uh, this was a knit blank versus a crochet blank. And I made this on my Singer knitting machine. So basically I'm curious how this yarn, which is still pretty warm, will compare to the other. But you can see in sections that we do have some nice color breaking with the bright blues and stuff, but we've also got some nice, nice stripes. And yeah, my hands didn't really pick up any color. There's some blue on the plastic wrap, but overall, you know, things I, I'm touching it with my bare hands because I've dyed this kind of yarn enough that I know that the food coloring is in the yarn. So, but that still needs to cool a bit before I can wash it. I can come down. Let's, yeah, so you can see the yarn. I know that the colors, I mean, the colors are muted. It's like deep blues, deep browns, teals. Um, so yeah, lots of, lots, lots of dark, dark shades in there. But yeah, I think that it's a uh, pretty, pretty fun, pretty fun colorway. Um, I'm very, very excited to unravel it and see. And so the thing with this one, I, I dyed it sort of at a diagonal. So that way we will have uh, areas where we'll probably have some tonal variation within the color. So then we'll have a bit of a variegated section where we'll have like blue, brown, blue, brown, blue, brown before transitioning to just all tones of brown. So that will still be striped, but there'll be some intermediate sections to it, which will sort of not be, the stripes won't be super sharp. It'll sort of blend them together a bit more and be kind of fun. <laughs> but, oh, oh my goodness, it is almost noon. I was like, I'm not gonna do another three hour stream today. And we're almost at three hours. Um, but that's just because we're having so much fun that I couldn't help myself. Even if, I'm sorry, I didn't do a fourth blank. I, I didn't have that in me that much more standing. But I will save, I'm not going to throw away any of these dyes that are left over. I will save them all in some capacity. Um, just remembering something to write down. But do you guys have... Um, Ooh, a dip dyed sweater. Would I ever consider a dip dyed sweater project? Probably not. Um, that's something that might be. Now, if I find like a wool sweater at a secondhand shop, then I probably would do it. 
um, and I would try that. But I don't think I would knit a sweater and then dip dye it. I think that I think that you could get some really cool results. For me personally, the number of hours that go into a sweater to then, even with my comforts with dip dyeing, like if it didn't go perfectly, I would be really, really dis disappointed by that. Um, so, oh, the very pink YouTube channel did a dip dye sweater. That's that's awesome. Like, I think it would be really, really pretty. I just know that me personally, I would be too nervous. Just like, and I mean, this is something that I might try at some point to dye enough yarn for a sweater. But I'm, I'm a little nervous to try that because you wouldn't be able to do that, say, in a washing machine because it could damage the yarn. But I don't have something with great enough volume to try to do one dye lots worth of yarn. Um, but I thought about I thought about doing something like that at some point to try to get to do that. But made, but the thing that I wouldn't be able to do would be to knit this, like I've made adult sweaters, I've done three. For myself, I've done a short sleeved cardigan, so an open cardigan, and I did a short sleeved sweater. Keith got a full, full sweater, and I've made some sweaters for the kids, but I have not done um, I like sweaters. They just take a long time. And I haven't done many, uh, for myself just because of, like my shape and stuff fluctuates. I, now that I'm done having kids, I have some sweater patterns that I'd like to do for myself. Um, but, oh, okay. I'll read this comment. This comment says, thank you so very much for all you do for the fiber community. It is my pleasure to experiment and play around with these techniques and, Honestly, this week is just an excuse for me to dye a lot of sock blanks all at once versus sort of like hoarding and saving them for something really special. If you build a fire outside, put a metal wash tub on a grate. Oh, you have a cook fire. That would, that would work. Um, you did a sweater quantity in a canning pot. Yeah, I have a canning pot. That's what I would do. I just don't know. I think the most I've ever done at once is 400 grams. And that like turned out pretty well. Like you don't really notice a difference between the, the dye lots. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know if I could do 10 skeins at once. But I also think it depends on like, do you want a kettle dyed effect? Because you could pack in the yarn pretty closely and have something that's really cool. Um, but who knows, maybe they'll be like, maybe we'll come up with like a deal with someone where I'll dye yarn and someone will make a sweater and then we'll do like a collaboration or something. Uh, I haven't had as much time for knitting lately because more of my time has been on the dyeing and, and aspect, but I'm still having a ton of fun. <laughs> uh, this week, this week is pretty awesome, but I think that I do need to sign out because uh, in the last, what, so in the last 16 hours, I have now been live for six of them. <laughs> so, you know, it's fun. I, I can certainly talk a long time. I just need a bit of a, of a break <laughs> now. But I will be live again in 24 hours, so I have a bigger break this time. You added less acid until it was all in... And then you, okay, so it took the dye slower. Yes. Um, I would probably add the yarn. If I was doing a lot of skeins, I would add with almost no acid in the pot at first until I got all the yarn in and then add some acid. So that way I could try to keep things pretty even. But whew, thank you all so much for joining me today. I mean, this, this was just a blast. Um, I was really, really excited to do the wild still warm but our wild and crazy striping pattern here very very happy happy colors um it's still warm i'll probably wait to maybe until this evening to wash all of them just you know get some clean up and get some lunch i need some lunch um <laughs> i hope you guys all have a fantastic fantastic day um i yeah and hopefully i'll see some some, all of you at noon tomorrow when we try to do some stamping, stenciling, 
with uh, some of the blanks that we dyed yesterday and some, um, I'll probably start with the one that I've been pre-soaking today to see it's a, sort of a tester before we decide what works best. But yeah, uh, so yeah, I'm, if you, I'm Rebecca from Chemnitz and if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel and like the video. That helps me, it helps me a lot. Um, you can also like the Chemnitz Facebook page and come join us in the Chemnitz Lab group on Facebook. Um, it's a group for Chemnitz fans and mostly focused on dyeing yarn and, you know, people are sharing like all kinds of projects and there's a lot of amazing stuff in there that even I am like, ooh, I wish I could do that. So I like, it's a place where you guys can chat and learn from me, but I can also learn from you. And so it's a very like collaborative group and we have a lot of fun, but yeah. Check the, the schedule. Oh, I'll drop the schedule in the chat one more time so you can see when the other streams are coming out this week. I think Friday, Friday stream maybe starts at like 10. Oh, I should look before I say. Friday has a daytime stream. The stream will start at 10.30 a.m. So a little later than today, but it's, it'll be around the same, the same timing. So um, yeah, the link that I know there's been a delay from what I say and what shows up, but the, the link that I did, had posted in the chat will give you the schedule. And if you just go to the Cabinet Tutorials channel page, you can see the live stream links are all there already. So yeah, thank you so much for joining me. And I hope that you guys have a blast. Oops, that accidentally was open. So you guys have a blast with your own dying adventures. I will see you tomorrow. Bye everyone. And oh wait, there's another video that will be coming out this afternoon. So you can see more from me, just not live. So stay tuned. Bye everyone. <laughs>